Okay, yeah, without further ado, everybody, welcome uh, to our, our painting event, our step-by-step -step painting tutorial here on Twitch. Uh, my name is Aaron. for those who don't know me. I've been uh, officially doing this for three years, actually. Today on Twitch, we're celebrating, like I said, three years being on Twitch, three years being online, teaching people painting, uh, you know, showcasing my, my art journey and hoping to inspire others through it. Uh, so it's a cool day to do a step-by-step uh, -step tutorial. Uh, today I'll be teaching to you step by step this nice painting uh, to my, I guess, to my left, to my right, your left, I don't know. Uh, it's a nice pink, uh, cloudy, cloudy sky, nighttime kind of like skyline vibe as well. I added these nice little um, buildings in the bottom, the, uh, the power lines as well, just to give a little more perspective. But mostly I just wanted to paint some fun clouds for everybody. Um, I've been painting a lot of clouds for like my personal artwork, things that I spend a little more time on. You might actually see some stuff in the background when I switch cameras. Uh, and yeah, I wanted to kind of bring it to life with a shorter form tutorial to teach you all how to get something similar, something nice and fluffy, rounded and all of that. So if you've never done uh, a step-by-step -step tutorial before, here's what happens. Um, I actually paint along with you while I teach you step-by-step -step how to make the nice design that I uh, made here. So camera change, here's the uh, original painting I made. I made this live on Twitch uh, maybe like a month or two ago, actually. I like to kind of make these live while people are watching so I can get feedback as I go and get some suggestions. Uh, but yeah, the original and then the blank. I'll be painting along with you on my blank canvas so that way I can verbally tell, excuse me, my goodness, verbally tell you what I'm doing, but also you can watch along as well. You can kind of see visually uh, and that way you can follow along, you know, at your own pace with what I'm doing or you can also change it up as you go as well. Um, I always try and remind people and encourage them to change the painting up. It doesn't need to be pink and purple if if you don't like pink and purple, it doesn't need to be a city on the bottom. It could be a tree line. Uh, change it up as much as you like. I just hope that you're inspired to uh, to paint a little bit today or draw or whatever medium you're using as well. It's all welcome here. Uh, in terms of supplies, I always keep my supplies the same. Uh, for those who are in chat now and need to look up the supplies, you can always use the command supplies. So that's exclamation point supplies and you'll get a nice big list. Uh, but here they are for you now. I have three different paint brushes always the same. I have a large flat brush. Flat just means all the bristles are kind of lined up in a nice flat line like this. Uh, a medium round brush. Round just means they all kind of come to a little point like this. And then a nice small round brush. So again, a nice point, but teeny tiny brush. So that's what I use. I'll be instructing you with those three. If you have any different ones, I always just recommend having a couple different sizes and shapes and you should be fine. You don't need these exact ones to do what I'm doing today. Uh, in terms of paint colors, I always use five paint colors as well. Uh, red, yellow, phthalo blue, black, and white are the colors I use. Uh, we have lots of colors to mix like purples and pinks and I'll teach you how to do all of that with just those five colors. If you like having some pre-mixed colors though, maybe you have some pink or some purple lying around, feel free to use those as well. But otherwise I'll teach you how to mix. Um, I always recommend having a cup of paint water. I just have this little glass here. Uh, some paper towel. Hopefully you're wearing something you don't mind getting paint on as well. This is a, a painty dress that I have, so here we are. Uh, and that's about it for supplies. I guess a canvas as well or just any anything to paint on, be it a wall, a piece of paper, whatever you've got. Uh, that's all welcome too. For those curious, I'm using a 16 by 20 canvas and I'm doing it portrait oriented today just so I get the skyline down here and then the sky up here. Um, Oh, I always re I always um, remind everybody as well. Maybe you're watching this on YouTube, by the way. Hi, YouTube. Um, for those in Twitch chat, though, who are like, ooh, I don't know if I can paint the whole painting. I might stop halfway. I might just watch today. That's all OK. Um, I do record this video and I do upload it to YouTube within about a week after it airing on Twitch here. So if you're someone who likes to pause the video, slow down or again, like do it, you know, another time, do the other half of the painting another time. Um, that'll be all up on my YouTube channel. Hi snowman I see you I'll respond to you in a second uh, it's all on my YouTube channel I have lots 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 of tutorials on the YouTube channel as well so if you like what you see here and then you want to do more of it uh, hop over to YouTube and see what I've got there oh and I think that's it I'll uh, I'll do our little cheers and then we can get started and that's my spiel all right so what we're going to start with as usual is the background I chose a nice kind of like 
bluish purple up here, um, doing a nice gradient down to more of a medium to light purple. Again, if you want to change that up, feel free, but I'll teach you how to mix these colors and blend them all together so at least you have the techniques down, okay? So I'm going to start with our large flat brush to begin with, this nice big one, or again, any big brush that you have. I'm dipping it into my water, which is plain water right now, but it will become paint water momentarily, I guess. And I'm going to mix my first two colors. I just have my two colors on my plate here. I'll add more as we go. I have phthalo blue and red. I'm going to mix, I would say about half, 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 even parts blue and red. See how that looks. And then I might add a little extra blue. If you did listen to me at the start there, I said I made kind of like a bluish purple. So I might go a touch heavier on the blue, but not too much, because I find the blue kind of takes over quicker anyway, even if we do 50-50, so. And yeah, you can always test it, see what it looks like. Maybe a little more red, I feel like that's pretty blue. And whenever you're ready, you can start by swiping that left and right, back and forth along the top of the canvas, and I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit. Oh, see, it's still pretty blue. I'm gonna keep mixing until I get a nice color that I like. So stroking left and right, and I would say I'm gonna come maybe a third of the way down. What is that? Maybe about a third here, okay? Yeah, it's looking pretty blue on the camera, but I am mixing blue and red together. So go ahead with that first step. I always do a lot of time for the very first step just to make sure we're all kind of caught up if anyone's still setting up or whatnot. Left and right. And if you saw me going across those edges, that is what I was doing. I'm kind of wrapping my paint around the canvas here. That way you get a nice full coverage all the way around. If you're using a flat piece of paper, you might not be able to do that, of course, but if you have something wrapped, I always make sure that I'm kind of, I try to make sure that I'm painting on all edges and all sides just to kind of continue the painting around. Never seen that on the lat arm. Is it new? It's new as of today. It's a very real tattoo that chat chose for me, yes. Do you like it? Hey Bear, thank you so much. Three years is a long time, but we're still here. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for joining in today. <laughs> Isn't it cool? Yeah, I got it live on stream. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep chit-chatting as I apply this bluish purple here. If anyone has questions, again, that's what the chat is for. Feel free to pop anything in there and I'll do my best to answer as I'm instructing here. <clears throat> super real it's absolutely real that i uh, applied with water today very real yeah <laughs> all right what were uh, charlene's questions here charlene said how is the volcano plate it's great for those who haven't met volcano plate here he is this is volcano 2.0 I had an even larger volcano plate that I had begun using as a paint palette before the pandemic. And then I split it open live on stream after using that for five years and it got maybe like this tall. It was pretty, pretty big. Um, but this one's just kind of like, he's like a teenager. He's not, he's not small, but he's not huge. But this is the paint palette that I use for those who uh, are curious. You don't need fancy supplies to be an artist. You can use whatever you want. So this is just a paper plate that I started in January of 2021. And I just keep piling acrylic paint on as it dries. See, this is all dry and this is uh, wet on top. It's kind of a messy, messy uh, process, but it saves some plates, you know? <clears throat> Do you still have your apron? Yeah, it's uh, it's back here. I don't wear it as much anymore because I'd like to preserve it. It was kind of coming apart a little bit. So uh, I just kind of keep it on the side here. And then your last question was, how's the website? Good, the store's great. I actually sold three paintings the other week to a very, uh, very generous purchaser who bought three of my paintings, which was just, I was just over the moon about it. I was in shock, honestly. I found out while I was <laughs> live streaming on Twitch, they were nice enough to come in the chat and kind of let me know that they had purchased and I checked out my email and I, I literally couldn't believe it. <laughs> I 
I was like, what? <laughs> no way. <laughs> My reaction was not super excitable because I think I was just like almost not believing it, but it, it was real. I've already shipped the paintings off. They've received the paintings. They're a happy customer as, as far as I know, so I'm very happy about that, yeah. So the store is going well. I hope to add more stuff soon. I'm working on some, uh, as I said, some cloud paintings. You might be able to see back here, one of my finished ones. I'm trying to work on kind of a series right now, along with a bunch of other products. So that'll be soon. Yeah, you got it, Snow, you got it. OG Volcano Plate was an old plate uh, in comparison to this young, I know, <laughs> this young whippersnapper. Uh, these Gen Z plates, you know. Yeah, he's behind me for those curious. That's the split volcano plate up there. I can show that off a little later if we want a close up, but you can see the insides there. Yeah. Thanks, Charlene. Yeah, it was a really exciting, it's an exciting thing to uh, to sell some original, especially original paintings, right? I'm glad that people enjoy everything I'm I'm selling on the website, but it's extra special when uh, when an original painting goes out. So it was a good, good feeling for sure. All right, last couple moments on this step and then we'll move along. I'm just gonna touch up the edges a little bit. It is looking pretty blue as well. Try and get a little more red in there just to mix it in. But don't worry, if yours is looking blue too, that's okay we'll be purposely going a little more purple with the next step. So we'll get a nice smooth transition still. All right. So I'll slowly move us on to the next step. So next step is just as I was describing, transitioning down from this kind of blue purple down to more of what I would call like a medium tone purple. It's not super bright. It's not super dark. It's just in between. Uh, but more importantly, it has a little more red in there. It's not as much of this bluish purple here. It's going to be a little warmer, a little like almost like a brighter purple, in my opinion, when you put those reds in there, it gets kind of brighter, maybe more of that like royal purple that I think most people think of when they hear purple. But colors are funny. We all think of different things. So to make that purple, I'm just going to add more red to our mixture here, or you can start a new mixture if you want. You can just use more red and a little less blue this time. So you'll kind of see a little bit of a difference with that dark purple. Here's just what it looks like on the canvas compared to the blue. But before I add it, I also do want to lighten it a little bit more because I want to start to fade it down into these lighter pastel purples. So to make it lighter, I'm going to add some white to my mixture. So just to repeat that, I've added lots of red, a little bit of blue, and then I'd say like a scoop of white. And you can see how much that has brightened up the purple. There it goes there. And again, I'm not looking for a pastel purple, not super, super light, but not super dark either. Something a little in between, maybe a little bit more. That should be good. See that difference? Yeah, a lot more of what I would think is more of a common or traditional purple. So I'm going to swipe that on left to right, just like I was doing with the blue purple. And I would say once again, I'm going to go maybe down to here ish. So that's about two thirds of the way down. If anyone has a different size canvas than me, I always try and do like portion sizes rather than actual measurements, because I know everyone might be on different sizes of canvas or any other uh, medium there. I've heard some people paint along digitally too, like they use it as practice for digital art, which I can totally see. Um, I don't do a lot of digital art, but I do mess around on Procreate on my iPad. And honestly, I've, uh, <laughs> I've debated like following one of my tutorials or just like a design just so I can practice, right? Because it's a whole new thing to learn how to blend colors, you know, on, on a digitally. Blending and applying, I feel like are my biggest, uh, I have trouble with those. So I do usually very basic things. 
when I'm messing around. I'm not creating like full designs and art pieces. Okay, so as you can see, I'm putting this on. I haven't blended yet, and that's because I, I like to teach the blending after I apply the color. If you've already gone ahead and blended it though, that's totally fine. Some people like to blend right off the bat. I personally like to apply the color first and then I kind of smooth it all out. So if you're panicking about this, don't panic quite yet. We'll go back up there. And again, roughly two thirds. It doesn't need to be exact. I feel like the more you paint, the more you get comfortable with that idea. Nothing needs to be like super exact. I think the less we paint, we're just kind of like worried about that stuff a little bit more. We think a little more about it, but the more you do it, I find you kind of loosen up a little bit. You realize it doesn't matter as much. We can always go back and correct things. It's all good time. All right, so I've applied that kind of medium toned purple. I'll teach you how to blend it now. So to blend, I'm just gonna keep using that same brush. It's that large flat brush still. And you can see there's maybe a little bit of paint on there. I didn't like get a fresh blob, but there's just a little leftover of the color I was just using. I'm just gonna swipe my brush in between the first two sections now. So in between that bluish purple and that medium purple. And you can see what happens is my brush is kind of picking up a little bit of both, just kind of moving it together to get rid of that harsh line. So I'm going left and right over top of that in between area. And then I also like to move my brush a little further down and a little further up. That way the brush kind of catches a little bit of the blue purple, maybe brings it down a little bit and then does the same thing, catches that medium tone purple, brings it up a little bit. It just helps a, with a little more of a blend. It's almost like you're expanding the blending space, right? Rather than just going in one little spot. It's almost a little more obvious, I find, if it's kind of in one spot. So you want to bring it a little up and I would say a little down as well. And you can see already how that's creating a nice transition from the bluish purple down to that medium tone, more red purple. Okay, so I'll just give a minute or two for that one step, that I guess blending after applying the purple. And then we're gonna go down to our nice light purple next. <clears throat> yeah, this painting evolved a lot. I remember as I was painting it, I initially, as I was explaining at the start, uh, just wanted to make a cloud painting. And it started as just like clouds and a moon up top. The skyline was definitely added after. And that's why I was saying earlier, if you want to change that up at all, I think that would be a pretty easy thing to change up. You could make it less like city industrial. You could do more, like I said, like a tree line. You could do some nice like mountains or peaks or something, or you could even just leave it open. Um, it was open to begin with, just nothing down here. It was just like smaller clouds and some stars. So if you're a little intimidated by the power lines or the city structures or you know, anything is just not, not vibing with you as well. You can totally just keep it out of the painting. That's fine. Again, I want to keep reminding of that because like I said before, sometimes we get stuck on following the steps exactly, but painting should be fun. Painting should be, you know, what you want it to be, right? That way it'll be a little more unique if you have it. A little changed up or if something just doesn't go quite the same embrace it embrace it all right i'm going to go back to my plate here i'm using that same brush i did wash it off by the way um usually in the at the start i'm not washing it off to get rid of all the color from the brush it's more so just to like bring back the shape a bit because as we keep using it it keeps getting pent up with paint and gets like larger and larger fuller and fuller so washing it sometimes is just to get that paint out and kind of start with a, a fresh brush you know so what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing white and I'm adding it to my existing purple color and you can see how that's changing it to a nice, nice lavender color, a nice pastel-y purple. Just trying to add a little more blue and red because I don't want to quite that light. I'm already running out of paint. Let me refill here. Yeah, I want a light purple, just not the lightest purple. So. I start by throwing in some white and then I can always re-add some red and blue in there to darken it slowly as much or as little as I want. All 
All right, let's have a look. I think something like that. See, it's still pretty light. It's just not like the very lightest purple we could make, right? Still a fair amount of color in there. Okay, and I'm gonna start doing the same thing. So I'm just going to apply that by stroking left and right, right below the section that I just applied. So we're now in kind of the bottom third, I would say. And I'm trying my best to cover that whole bottom third with the small amount of paint I mixed. <laughs> I'm so bad at that. When I'm doing backgrounds anyway, I feel like I, I never mix it enough. You can see how I'm like scraping against my plate here. I'll never learn. You can use a little water to help the paint spread a little easier. I just try and avoid using too much because it sometimes it thins out the paint so much that you can kind of see the canvas through it. Just not as smooth of a stroke as you go. So yeah, if you see me kind of dipping over here, that's me grabbing the tiniest amount of water, maybe tapping it off a bit, and then going into my paint. So again, that'll thin it out and kind of prolong the use of it a bit. So if you're running out of paint like me, just use a little water, that might get you through it. I'll just mix a little more here and then I'll keep going. You see a color difference, it's not intentional, I'm just trying to color match it. This is all supposed to be the same color all in here. Um, I hope all my Ontario friends are staying safe with the fires. I know a fair number of you who follow my tutorials are from Ontario. That's where I originally was and then I moved. Um, so yeah, just uh, just thinking of you all. I think it's kind of bizarre that that's what you're all dealing with and I'm not, considering I'm West Coast. I just feel like it's a little more common West Coast, but anyway, yeah, I hope you're all staying safe and doing okay with the uh, with the smoke and all that. All right, I'm just taking my brush and kind of smoothing things out. Now that I have all my paint applied, you saw I was kind of applying it a little like this, and that's a little little messy and textured, so just smoothing it out fixes that. And now that I've applied all my paint, I can blend. So I'm just taking, again, the same brush, no extra paint, just swiping in between that second and third section. Trying to get my brush to pick up any of that second section color, which is not really happening right now. And if that is happening to you, that just means the section is maybe a little dry. See how my brush is kind of putting this kind of, it's still nice though, this nice soft brush stroke on top. That's just me trying to blend the two together, but they're not blending. Cause again, this one is a little dry. So if that happens to you, it's a really easy fix. I'm glad I can demonstrate for you in real time here. You just need to grab a little more of that first color on your brush and then you can keep blending. So it's like you're applying a fresh coat of that medium purple and then you can blend it into the lighter purple. So I'm just going to go back to my palette here. I'm going to mix something close to that middle purple there. I'll do my best. And again, if it's not exact, that's okay. That looks pretty close. So I've appl uh, yeah, applied some fresh medium purple. Now I'll go in between. Much better. You can see how that's blending a lot more smooth and it's actually combining with the other color. What was happening before is my light purple was just spreading on top of the, uh, the medium purple. It wasn't actually mixing in. There we go. Much better. See how soft that is now. Again, that might that might help even if things are blending, you know, decently. Sometimes it helps just to put a little extra of each color either on your brush or on the canvas and then you can mix them together. 
because even if the paint is sticky, right, it's going to be a little harder to actually blend it together. All right, so that's what we're left with, a nice gradient. Any really purple gradient is what we're looking for, just a nice, like, dark to light. Mine goes bluish purple. I would say this is called medium purple to a light purple, something like that. I'll just give a minute or two in case anyone's catching up with that, and then we can move right along here. We're going to go right into our clouds next, actually. Get our first couple coats on. We want to put the clouds on first so that if, if uh, our, our power lines happen to go a little high, you can see in my original painting here, um, I kept my power lines a little bit lower just so they weren't really intruding on the clouds, but who knows, your design might have them overlapping a little bit, maybe they're just a little closer to the sky, so just to make sure things are, you know, uh, in their proper places, we want to put the clouds on first and then the power lines on after that. Pretty close, right? Hmm. Again, I always try and get this painting as close as possible to my original. You might see minor differences, and that's honestly just a product of painting two different paintings. <laughs> it's just proof that everyone's painting comes out a little different, even if it's the same artist painting the same design that they made. Uh, it's always going to be a little different. So again, if yours is a little different, you're right on track with me. Excuse the sirens. I'm going to mute myself for a sec. Okay, they've passed. All right, just as a heads up, we're gonna switch brushes next. I'll be using this medium round brush next. I'll give one more quick minute in case anyone's still fiddling with the background there. When you are done with your large flat brush, I would recommend just keeping it in water. That's what I do with my brushes as I'm painting. I just stick them boop, right in their paint water to rest. Uh, that way the paint doesn't dry on them. Acrylic paint dries pretty quickly for anyone who's newer to acrylic paint. Um, oil paints are the ones that take days to dry. Acrylic is like 10 minutes or less. That's why I like teaching with acrylic because we can go over top very quickly and kind of like correct things if we don't like them. But that also means you gotta be careful with your brushes and other, other things that might have acrylic paint drying on them. So just be aware of that. Okay, so as I warned, I'm going to switch brushes now. I have this medium round brush. So again, just any brush I would say that comes to a point or a tip I think is nice because we'll be doing the clouds next, which involves some very like round brush strokes. So I like paint brushes with a tip for that. They're a little easier to make those nice curves with versus a flat brush that has all of the bristles lined up. You're kind of like dealing with a flat edge and it could be a little complicated to like make a nice smooth, you know, curve here and there. So that's why I recommend any sort of round brush. It can be larger than this, smaller than this, all of it's okay. I use a medium one just so it has a fair amount of paint I can use, but I can also still stay in control and I'm not putting on huge blobs onto the canvas. So for our clouds, we do the clouds in a few steps. You can see if you uh, look at my original above me here, uh, lots of different pinks in there. What I like to do is I like to start with some darker pinks and I kind of like just map out where the clouds are. I can kind of fiddle with the actual overall shape and placement of them. And then once we finish with our base coat of kind of like a red or a hot pink, we then just move to lighter pinks. So we'll make like a nice medium bright pink, like a, like a typical Barbie pink, if you will. And we'll start to shape out um, the tips of the clouds, I guess like the, the highlights and the tops, as well as some clouds within the clouds. You can see how some of them are kind of layered, right? We have some clouds kind of in front of other clouds, even if they're all part of the same 
big poof of cloud. Does that make sense? <laughs> a couple layers on some of them. Uh, so that's what the lighter colors will do. So just know with our first step, our clouds might look kind of just blobby. They might just kind of look boring and like, ooh, they look kind of messy. Once we add the lighter colors, that's when the shape is going to come out. That's when the layers are going to come out and all the nice curves that we see in my original there. Okay, so keep an open mind as we do these next couple of steps and then it'll all kind of come together with some highlights on top. So I'm going to start with just a plain red, plain red. And again, as a warning, this is going to come off very dark looking, not very fun and pink and cute. It's going to be kind of muddy almost. So just trust me on this. This is how we get our nice dark base so that we can put some lighter colors on top. I'm going to start, um, I'll start with this cloud. I think I'm going to start in the front and work my way back or higher up, which is actually kind of opposite of what I would say should be done when we do the details. I'll switch that up later, but for now, just so you can see a little easier, I'm going to start down here in the lighter purple. Okay, so I start my clouds. You can see all of them. They all have a nice kind of flat base. All of them have a very... Um, very clean, horizontal, straight line at the bottom for the most part. They're not perfect, but they're all pretty flat, right? So I'm going to start uh, maybe about halfway up the canvas. If you want to follow my design there, it looks like the clouds start about halfway up. Start with some horizontal line action. I'm going to start from the right hand side. I'm just kind of brushing to the left. And I might go a little over halfway across, something like that. Start with a nice big cloud. And you can see I'm just kind of lightly holding my brush, kind of wisping it along. Again, allowing the tip to kind of graze across. So I'm not doing like a super thick line with lots of pressure like this. Just kind of lightly grazing. As I pressed, water popped out of my brush and gave a little drip, but that's okay. Okay, so we got our horizontal base. Now what I like to do is I like to do some curves. And they're all kind of going to start to go higher and higher as they get from the edge of the cloud, more so to what I would, I would imagine is the middle of the cloud. I'm imagining the other end of the cloud kind of extends off of our canvas over here. So here's my red paint on that same brush. I'm going to start maybe just a little further in from the very tip. I like to leave the tip kind of alone. And then I'm going to do a nice, let's just start with a nice small curve. So just go bring my brush up and around. If it's easier, you can even make the curve like go all the way down to the bottom again. But what we want is for the curves to kind of connect to one another and build off of them. Here's more red paint. I'm going to do a second curve. So you can see kind of building off of it. I'm not starting at the very bottom. I'm starting kind of in the top, top right area of that first curve. And then I'm doing another curve on top. Let's do another one, getting a little higher. Let's do another one, getting even higher. And if you notice, I'm trying to make them all a little bit different. Some of them are maybe a little like flatter. Some of them are a little more, you know, very rounded. They all kind of uh, just work together, but they're all a little different. So that way you're not kind of like doing a staircase all the way up, right? You don't want them all the exact same. I'm trying to switch them up a little bit, make some, you know, wider, bigger, make some smaller. And I just work in my way a little further up until I reach the edge of the canvas and I just kind of fall off with that last one. All right, so that's a very, very good base of the cloud. We'll, we'll pretty it up and fancy it up a little bit later. But for now, I think that's good. I might make this maybe a little bigger. I'm just going to do this a second time, making them a little bigger. And again, that's the beauty of this step. You can just kind of play around and do things as many times as you want until you have the shape you like. So I'm just going to make my cloud a little taller, redo my curves a little higher up. Now I got a slightly bigger cloud. There we go. And when you're happy, just fill it in with red. You can see I'm just stroking a little left and right. Maybe I'll do some more curves though as well, just to keep it kind of going the same direction. All our brush strokes, I mean. Keep the cloud kind of fluffy and textured. And there we are. So again, this is the stage where it kind of looks like a blob. It doesn't really look like a nice poofy cute cloud quite yet. 
But we gotta trust the process, as always. If you saw what I did here, I was just kind of extending the tip a little bit. Again, I like the tips of the clouds, the very bottom left and bottom right, to be almost like they're disappearing in the wind. I don't like it harshly stopping like this. I think it's nicer to kind of have them wisping away, so I just have that little tip extending and then maybe a little curve to start us off before we get bigger. You know, a little bit of a transition there. Okay, if you're still working on the first one, keep going. I'm just going to keep repeating the process um, with no real extra new information. I'll just try and tell you things as I think of them, but it's going to be the same idea and the same technique going further up the painting. So I'm going to start from the left hand side this time. I'm going to move a little further up so my clouds aren't the same, you know, horizontal plane. Maybe I'll go here this time. I'm going to bring this maybe just over here. It's going to be like just touching the other cloud. And I'll do the same thing now, just going the other way. So I'm going to start on the right hand side this time where this little tip is. Maybe I'll start by doing a couple smaller curves, like very low curves. And then I'll go really high up with these couple here. So that just gives my cloud a little bit of a different shape, right? It's not as poofy all the way through. It's a little flat and then a little more shapely up here. I want to make it even bigger though. And then same thing, you can fill it in when you're done. So you can technically place these clouds wherever you want. You can kind of fill up your sky as much or as little as you would like to. Um, but the one thing I'll point out is if you do want to stick to the design I have, you'll want to figure out where you're putting your moon. Just if you like the moon, again, in the design I have, how it's kind of resting, you know, on the clouds in the open here. And then we have some beams coming through. So as I'm placing the second cloud, I'm trying to, you know, consider the, the moon as well, right? I'm thinking my moon is going to go right around here. It's a nice little pocket where it can kind of rest on both of those clouds and then we can get some beams kind of shooting through this cloud, shooting through this cloud. So yeah, just kind of figure out where you want your moon. We're not going to paint it in quite yet, but I would at least consider where it's going. Mob quote, we don't make, oh, a classic, a classic. We don't make mistakes, just happy accidents. Thanks, Bob. Thank you for being our biggest motivator. Okay, again, keep taking your time. No need to rush along if you're enjoying the process of doing some slower clouds. I'm just going to keep going so everyone can see, you know, what my finished product is. I'm going to start my third cloud. I'm going to switch sides again. I'm going to go to the right hand side. And I'm going to start a little higher than our second cloud. But this time I think I might start actually kind of behind this cloud here. It will be behind, but for now I'm just going to paint it right on top. That's okay. Come across. That way we'll have a little fun overlap that we can deal with later. So this guy will be in front, but we're painting the cloud behind it here. Oh, he's kind of a long one. I'm going to bring him all the way over here. And then again, we're going to leave that tip alone. We're going to slowly add some curves coming up. This one's a nice long cloud, so maybe a little bit of a slower, slower incline. And you can even, I didn't do this much in my clouds in the original, but just to demonstrate, you could bring the uh, curves back down as well. Like maybe if you imagine the middle of the cloud is right here, you know, bring your curves all the way up and then start them coming down again. And that way you can kind of see the rest of the cloud being formed. I'm going to try and stick to my original, so I'm just going to carry mine all the way up here. But both of those designs looked good. I know! I'm excited to have the bomb and the gold one! <laughs> I wonder if anybody will go for the gold with the tier 3. That'll be curious for me to see. But yeah, I'm excited to mix them up. 
I think it was needed. And if we get some riots in chat, we can just do it again. <laughs> we can do it again in a couple months. <laughs> again, keep filling in your clouds, though. Keep filling in your clouds. If you'd like to repaint, you know, your first cloud, just so you can see with your brush strokes where those little curves are, feel free. But again, it might just look messy for now. We'll fix it up after once we add our lighter pinks. Okay, and on my design, I'm gonna add one more cloud. This last one's gonna be way up here. Well, and I guess this one kind of has the up down a bit. So this one I started on the left-hand side above that second cloud, it's not touching. It's gonna come all the way over here. I would say two thirds to three quarters of the way across. Then you can see what I did is instead of like completing the whole cloud, I just allowed it to kind of fall off the top of the canvas. So I'm gonna start some curves over here and then, oops, we have no more room and that's fine. But I have the ending over here too. So I'm gonna start some curves coming down over here to meet up with that end. And now it looks like I have more of a full cloud in view here. You can kind of see the start and the end a little bit more, even though this part is still falling off just a touch. I kept the curves low to kind of showcase that the cloud is starting somewhere close to here. I'm going to riot now, but over how yummy these Ultras Doritos are. <laughs> I'm shocked they're limited edition, especially in Canada Grey. You would think Doritos would understand. They have a good market waiting for the all dressed flavor right up here. I bet those are good. Like, Miss Vicky's just came out with an all dressed flavor, didn't they? Like, where have they been? <laughs> They've been sleeping on that. They have every other flair. They have like honey Dijon and like smoky, you know, applewood bacon flavor or whatever. Why not all dressed? They've hit every other flavor before our beloved all dressed flavor. Okay, so I've te technically completed my clouds, everybody. I'm just going back and kind of playing with the curves a bit and you can too once you kind of get your base of the clouds you can go back and make some curves a little more rounded keep some like jetting out more keep some a little more flush with the cloud itself and you'll start to see how those nice curves and edges start to form and again don't worry too much about your brush strokes right now if it's looking really messy again mine is too i can see through my brush strokes things are combining Again, the base is always a little messy. We can clean it up as we go. Sorry, I'm trying to remember to keep the mic back, but I also want you to hear me clearly. So it's a little bit of a battle. Don't want that shadow there. I'll do another quick minute or two in case anyone's still playing with those clouds. The cool steps are coming up though. We get to we get to make them pinker. We get to get some shape going in there. And the next steps are when we're going to start to bring in new layers to our clouds. So if you're wondering about the layers, how we get like clouds within the clouds, that'll be next step. For now, we just keep it kind of blobby and messy. If anyone's wondering why it's coming off really, you know, janky like this, it's because we're painting on top of a really dark color. We're painting on top of this blue purple. Um, so while we're using like straight red paint that looks really bright on our brush, if we add it to a dark color, it's gonna look a lot darker. It's gonna look kind of muddy and yucky, even if it's not mixing with it, it just, you know, isn't as bright. If we were to put this on a nice blank white canvas, it would be beautiful and red and bright like that versus this kind of dark, dark, scary color. So yeah, if that's ever happening to you, consider what you're painting on top of, right? Are you painting on top of a blank canvas or a, a light color? Or are you painting on top of a darker color? That'll really change how the, how the paint's looking. 
especially if you have more transparent paint. Um, I use like academic level paints, student paints. <laughs> and so those are very, uh, very watery, very, uh, very thin. So coverage like this isn't very great. If you had a thicker acrylic, it might come off a little brighter, a little better, but. Again, I've been using these paints forever and I love them. So that's just my opinion. I don't think you need to upgrade too, too much. If, even if you want to make some beautiful paintings, it doesn't mean needing to spend more money on better materials. I think you kind of learn for yourself which materials you want to spend money on. It's not necessary to get everything though. Are there black canvases like at Michael's? Are there? Um, I think they have them still. I don't have any personally. I don't think I've ever used one. They were going around when I was when I was teaching more in person gray because we had some paintings that had black backgrounds. I just made everyone paint them black. Hee <laughs> hee. It's part of the painting. <laughs> it was annoying with dry time though. Yeah, Uncle Snow was here. He popped in at the very start. All right, everyone, I'm going to move on to our next step here. So we got all our nice dark reds on. Now we can actually make some pinks. We want some pinks on the clouds. So I'm going to start by making a really like hot pink. It's going to look kind of dark still compared to, again, the uh, the other pinks in here. We want to keep slowly work our, working our way up to a lighter pink. We want to keep the lighter pinks on top. So that's why we keep them. Uh, we. Uh, we keep them last. <laughs> we keep them last. I don't know. They're last. Um, so I'm going to start with a, yeah, again, like a hot pink. I'm going to start filling in our cloud a second time. And it's okay if it mixes with the red. I know it might be still a little sticky or wet, and that's totally fine. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to keep this pink just a little higher, a little higher up. So I'm going to leave the bases very, very dark right here, here, here. And I'm going to kind of fluff up the tops a little bit and maybe fill in the middles as well. Okay, so just keep the bottom parts blank because we want those to stay nice and dark. That's how we're going to get dimension is keeping that kind of dark reddish pink um, still visible and then putting light colors on top and above it. All right, so I'm just washing off my paintbrush. Again, not necessarily for the color, just to kind of get the shape back. Here's my palette. I'm using lots of red and just a little bit of white. So you can see, I still want like a nice, I would call this a deeper pink, like a hot pink, but it's more pink than red, you know? That's what the white's gonna do. It's gonna turn it into more of a pink. All right, so still very hot, very bright, very pretty. And here I go. We're just gonna kind of, like I said, trace over what we have. Ooh, look at that pink. And I'm kind of bringing it down to the middle as well. So as I said, I'm starting high up here. I'm just kind of tracing my little curves. You can see I'm bringing it down a little bit. I'm allowing the pink to mix a little with that red, but I'm trying to keep that very bottom part still nice and dark and red. Grabbing more paint. I'm gonna do a couple more little poofs here. Grabbing a little more paint. You can see I'm just doing these small little curvy brush strokes as well. It helps keep the nice fluffiness. If you were to just go in like this nice and flat, it's gonna look flat, right? So instead you wanna keep doing these nice curves with your brush. That way you get all these brush strokes looking like they're they're cloudy, they're fluffy. Again, blending with the red. So I'm purposely trying to mix with the red a little bit as I go and then leaving it alone at the bottom. So we still got that nice dark red bottom there. All right, top, working our way down. Cool, and that's all I'm doing to each of those clouds for now. We're still not really defining, I guess we could, maybe I should a little bit. If you wanna start trying to map out your little layers of the clouds, you can, you won't see it really make a big difference right now, but it might help you with your lighter pink. So let's actually do that now. I'm gonna keep taking that same color. So this is the same color I was just using. And now that we have a chance to kind of make our cloud a little more, uh, like I said, layered, we're gonna add a second layer 
of our little curves inside of this big cloud. So I've already got my curves up here. I want to make a second layer here so it looks like it's just another section of the same cloud. So I'm going to start maybe a little further in this time. So rather than the very edge, maybe around here. And I'll just do the same thing, a small little curve or two, a couple bigger ones until I reach the right hand side. So these curves won't go up as high. They're going to stay more in the middle of the cloud, but they still kind of rise up a little bit as they get further to the right. So like I said, it won't make a huge difference, but at least you can kind of start to see what we're doing, right? You can kind of see the second layer starting to form and it'll help with uh, our paint placement next time we revisit this cloud. <clears throat> Spent 30k trying to get the hype mode to stay. Oh, that's my flex today. I appreciate it. I appreciate everyone voting for their favorite emotes. I was honestly really nervous about that little section of the stream because it doesn't really work if no one's here. <laughs> so I'm glad we had a bunch of people show up for that. I'm glad you all made the time to fight for your emotes. I'm sure the hype emote appreciates it, Cindy. It knows you spent all that, all those channel points, trying, trying, and I'll write down your flex in a second. Okay, I'm just doing the exact same thing, just tracing around what I've already made. Or again, if you want to use this as an opportunity to redo some things, like retry some curves, that's okay too. Same thing, kind of bringing this color down a little bit, so I'm just continuing my very sporadic curves. Small little brush strokes, bringing that color down to the red, trying to get it to blend a little bit. There you go, that's a little better. Again, keeping the red on the bottom. We don't really want to bring this color all the way to the bottom. We want to keep it nice and dark down there. And then if you want, you can try and add another layer again. I think this is, oh yeah, this is definitely a bigger cloud, so we can do that. Again, it's the same color. The only reason it's appearing a little lighter as I go is because I'm adding some fresh paint on top, right? I'm not trying to blend this as much into the red. Sorry, I'm trying to get the lighting right so you can see. So yeah, it's just like a little indication of the next, uh, next layer. It's not gonna be super bright, but we will make it bright as we lighten up our pinks. Oops. Bad mix. And your layer can kind of go all the way, you can see, to the bottom again, or it could even kind of line up and kind of combine with this top layer here. That works as well, so it just kind of disappears eventually. That's a cute look as well. Right, so we see our first layer. You can kind of see that second layer. Again, the second layer will become much more prominent with our next uh, next pink that we make. Where'd my journal go? There it is. The flex. And you can even try and add three layers if you want. If you have any really tall clouds that have lots of space in here, try and do a little third one, you know? One more. Even if it's just like a curve or two, it all helps with the nice layered look. Okay, I'm gonna go up to our third and fourth cloud. The third cloud's pretty much the exact same thing. The fourth cloud has a tiny bit of a different just placement to the technique. It's the same technique, just different placement. So hold on tight if you want to see that fourth cloud there. I'll do the third one quickly here. Again, note the variety of the curves, how some are really teeny tiny, quick, and then bigger and longer. Bring the color down a bit. I really especially just try and fill up those little little curves and poofs and then as it comes down I'm a little more messy with it. You can see just 
If it mixes a little, that's fine. If it stays on top a little, that's fine. Just keeping that bottom part nice and dark, nice and red. Actually, this is a key part to note as well. So I have two, two separate clouds, not just like the different layers. Two, I would say, separate clouds on top of one another, right? One's on top, one's on the bottom. Um, to really make sure you can see this front cloud in front of this uh, back cloud, the idea is we keep it a little darker, see at the bottom here, so that when we have this nice light highlight on top here, it's really going to pop off. If we were to keep this, or sorry, take this color, for example, all the way down, all of a sudden this cloud or this little line starts to disappear, right? It doesn't look as great. You're like, oh, it's one big blob now. So if you ever do that accidentally, maybe you just want a little paint happy there, you can always just grab a little more of that red or a darker color, add it back in. Say, no, I want the darkness there, thank you. And then bring it back and see, and then we'll add a lighter pink as well on top of this one and that'll, that'll really help. But that's the basic idea, that's why we keep those bottom parts a little darker. So if we have any overlap in layer, we can see it on top. <clears throat> now, Curiosity, you're still doing something. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We are pay playing Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Last year, I played the first Five Nights at Freddy's just for fun, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm challenging myself with trying number two. I'll just go as long as I can, Gray. <laughs> I'll see how I feel after the toot. I'll definitely play at least a little bit of the game. I just have no idea how long. I would anticipate an hour or two. Depends how into it I get, right? You know me, I'll be... I can beat this! I can beat this! <laughs> but after the first one being so difficult, I, uh, I'm more accepting of the idea of saying maybe we play for a couple hours and then leave the rest for another time. That's the plan. All right, just added a second layer there. And I'm up to our final cloud up at the top. And I said this one's a little different just because if you really, really look at the layers, you can see how I kind of like added some extra layers in front and almost brought them in a V shape. So they kind of like come up and then down. That's fine too. They all don't have to be following the exact same path of going up and down. They can go up and then down quicker, you know, just a little tiny cloud in front. So that's what I'm going to do with this one. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm grabbing the same color with the same brush. I'm going to start as usual by going along the tip tops, which there's not a lot of on this cloud because it all kind of falls off of the canvas, right? So I'm starting up there. That seems lighter than, hold on, I'm going to make this a little darker. Again, this is meant to be the same color as the other pinks. I may have just added a little extra white accidentally. Same idea. I'm going in, doing the tops, blending it down a little bit. Again, you can also even add some red to your brush if you want. There's no rule that says you can't re-add some of that first color to help with blending or to help with just re-adding it if you feel like it got lost at all. Okay, so again, to do a new layer that's not necessarily going up and down, maybe it just kind of goes in front a little bit. Here's all we do. I'm gonna start some new curves, maybe in here, so a little bit further to the right. And I'll come up just a couple. And then I'm just gonna come right back down. Even though I'm not at the end of the cloud yet, I'm just gonna come right back down. Blend a little bit. And that's a new layer. I'll do the same thing on the other side just to match it. You can see how I did kind of one and then two. So let's do that again. Couple curves, couple curves. And you can see they might kind of disappear in these curves, but it's more so the middle that I'm looking at here. I want to have these nice light curves on top of the dark background. There we go. And that makes it look like there's almost more of like a pocket behind, you know, a couple little layers. Or maybe it's the same layer, just goes down, up, down, you know? So just a little bit of a different look for you. 
I'm going to add a little more red paint here. Coco Stella, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. We're doing a step-by-step -step painting tutorial right now. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot them my way. Just re-adding a little red just to kind of cover those darker areas again. And keep that in mind throughout the painting, right? If you ever need to go back to colors, you can always do that. If you need to re-add or even if it's to, to help with blending again, you can always do that. It's all completely fine. Okay, I'll just give a minute or two in case anyone's playing with that second pink color that we've used. I guess it's the first pink color, but we have the red. <laughs> now we have dark pink. I'm going to add, I'm going to call it... I'm going to call it a light pink, and then what I did as the last step was just a tiny bit of a very, very light pink to just really lightly brush on top. So we'll do a light pink next, and then one more color after that for the clouds. So four colors total. Red, hot pink, I'll call it a light pink, and then very light pink. <laughs> I always have trouble naming all the colors when we have lots of layers like this. I know it can get a little confusing. So if you ever have any questions or need me to clarify, feel free to let me know. Like Aaron, do you mean the light pink or the light light pink? You know, I understand it's a little confusing and that's my fault. I'm just going to refill my palette as well. I'm getting low on colors again. But yeah, on that note, if anyone uh, <laughs> wants to hang out and watch me play a spooky game after this, that's what I'll be doing. Um, on Twitch, I, I do lots of things now. I used to only paint, but I do a large variety now. I do painting, I do bullet journaling, I do some gaming, just kind of whatever we all feel like. So this is our painting, you know, time that we're using here these next couple hours or this next hour or so. And then we'll be switching to gaming again. Yes, the edges, exactly. I've been doing, <laughs> as usual, I started well gray and then I started failing there. <laughs> Especially toots, I get caught up in teaching and then I forget my edges, but you all don't forget your edges. You all, yes. Sounds good, Hokey, sounds good. I'm glad you're all excited. Yeah, you can see there's lots of people in the chat waiting. <laughs> They're all politely watching me paint, but saying, when do we game? <laughs> it'll be soon, it'll be soon. Scary game too. I'm gonna shut off the lights. I'm gonna put some bright RBGs on. Get a little bit of a mood going. That we can all scream together. Ah! All right, but for now, I'm gonna add my third color to my cloud. So I'm gonna call this a light pink. So I'm using now lots of white with a little bit of red. So we definitely want something just lighter than we had before. That's the main goal. Primarily uh, getting a nice light pink. So if you want to see there's my kind of hot pink and there's the light pink on top of it So you can see how much lighter I got there Becca, thank you so much. Welcome in. We're just doing a little painting too. We'll be playing Five Nights and Freddy shortly after It's been a long stream today, but we're celebrating. Welcome in Andy, thank you for following as well. Thank you for those curious about what following is. It's just a way to keep in touch with the channel um, following kind of gives you a notification when I go live. I do have a set schedule that I stick to, but following helps you, uh, yeah, see when I'm on a little easier. So if you have a Twitch account, you can follow for free. That's all it is. It's just like following on Facebook or any other social media. It's just a way to kind of keep in touch and see what's going on. But you don't need to follow if you want to just watch the stream when you like. All right, here's my light pink. Again, that was red with lots of white. And it's pretty much the same thing, just keeping this a little bit higher up again. So with each new color, we're just kind of keeping it closer to that top edge or to the top edge of the next layer. So here I go. And I also try and do this a little looser too. So I'm kind of holding my brush kind of loosely, kind of near the middle or end of the brush even, just to kind of keep it naturally looser. That way I can get some lightly kind of wispier strokes a little bit. But you can see how I'm really sticking to the tops now. I'm just lightly blending it down a little bit. Maybe it blends with that nice hot pink. Maybe it just, just kind of rests on top as a nice transparent color. But you can see what's starting to happen here. We're starting to really get those, those tops highlighted, those nice curves highlighted. 
looks a little more poofy as a result. And again, you can always re-add some of your hot pink if either A, you went a little heavy on this next color, or B, even if you just want to like blend it a bit. Have fun with blending those two colors, right? No harm in that. I start you with this order of things, but you can mix up the order as you go. See, I think that looks nice, having all those nice colors kind of blending wet on wet and also a little bit of dry brushing too. Andy, hey, I watch your videos on YouTube. Oh, cool. Very nice. I'm always curious how people find me, so I'm glad you just mentioned it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I'm pretty much doing them at a rate of about like one a month now, I would say. I know I used to do them a lot more, and that was <laughs> during the height of COVID. Um, and I've been trying to like, you know, diversify a bit in what I do art-wise, so I've been a little busier. I'm glad you're still enjoying them, yeah. I'll be uploading this one to YouTube as soon as possible for you, if that's where you prefer to watch, but I'm glad you're here. Yeah, welcome. Clouds are your nemesis. I think it's a lot of people's nemesis, but the good news about clouds is that there's so many different ways you can do them, right? Like I'm teaching one way. I also added this highlight you can see down here, just so you know. Um, yeah, I'm doing this very, very like, it's not cartoony, but it's just very like fantasy, you know? Um, very cute, very bold, very fluffy. There's lots of ways to do just kind of wispy ones, more transparent ones. So if one way doesn't work for you, just keep trying. You gotta you know, try some other ways maybe, or just keep practicing. I always talk about practicing, of course. Okay, I'm just doing the same thing with that second layer that I talked about. So going a little more in front. Well, yeah, Andy, I hope this, uh, I hope this cloud does it for you. This cloud tutorial does it for you. Trees don't like you either. Oh man, yeah, trees can be tough as well. But same idea, honestly. I'll say the same thing about trees. There's so many different kinds we can try. But yeah, I find myself sticking to the Bob Ross ones. <laughs> it just teaches them so well. So again, I'm kind of dipping my brush both into the light pink and that hot pink as well so you can see how I'm trying to blend those two together a little bit kind of fluff them up a wee bit more and even if I need to I'll grab some red just to get that darkness back in there kind of blend it up but you can see how I'm always trying to move my brush either in curves or circular motions that way everything just looks nice and fluffy either nice big curves or small ones just to help with blending but they're coming through they're coming together <laughs> I follow on Facebook too, that's how I found- oh great, I'm glad! Yeah, I'll always be updating Facebook, I always do my best to update as many places as possible because I know we're all kind of scattered around. But thankfully I- yeah, thankfully I'm pretty much everywhere. <laughs> I try my best to be updating everywhere and posting everywhere, so... Yeah, wherever you like keeping up to date. Okay, same thing with this next cloud. I'm gonna start with- there's no reason I'm just starting with the front layer. You can again start with whatever one you like. Maybe it's even easier, honestly, to start with that first front layer because then you can see the tips and you can see how far down uh, you can go with the next layer because, again, you want to keep that top part darker so now you know not to go right up to that next layer here. Dead End, thank you for the follow as well. Welcome in. Yeah, Todd likes drawing uh, gnarly craggly trees. There you go. <laughs> yeah, if you boop it, it just clay. It's haunted, exactly. Uh, a branch is broken. It's haunted. It's scary. It's, uh, yeah, craggly. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm going to watch. Oh, nice. Sounds good, Andy. Yeah, I know a lot of people like watching on YouTube. I always uh, suggest if you come to Twitch, you can even ask questions as you're watching. Like, even if you're not painting along, you can kind of anticipate what you might want a little more help on. That way I'm right here if you have any questions. But yeah, you do your thing. I'm just glad you made your way over just to even check it out. Yeah. The branches. Oh, and the depth in the leaves. I can't get that in the whole tree. Right. I don't know if you tried my blossom tutorial. I think that was the last one I uploaded. But I tried to go through kind of like how to get that. You're saying the depth in the leaves. It's kind of like I'm doing the clouds now. It's, I would think a lot of starting with darker colors and then just getting slightly lighter, allowing those dark colors to 
stick a little bit, but covering them up at the same time. It's a little bit of both. But anyway, I feel you. I get you. A lot of painting is uh, practicing and then just finding what works for you. But I'm sure you know that. I'm sure you know that. Someday I like to follow Bob Ross. Oh, it's fun, Becca. I've done that a couple times on, on this stream on Twitch. But the problem is I follow it using acrylic paints and Bob Ross uses oils, which makes it extra challenging because he's going so so quickly with his blending and he can put on a layer of color and then manipulate it very easily. And I'm like, it's dry, Bob, it's dry. <laughs> so I'd recommend doing it in oils, but it is possible in acrylic. Just need to take time, watch. Exactly, yeah, you got it, Andy, you got it. Good energy. Exactly, yeah, you know it. He's easy to follow, but tough to paint if you're not painting in oils, exactly. But he is, he is fast too. Like, I think I'm a pretty fast painter just because that's, you know, what I'm used to is I'm used to teaching people. So I've learned to speed paint in a way, but he's, he's so fast. <laughs> I can't, I can't keep up. When I have followed him on stream, I've definitely like, I'll hear one step and I'll pause and I'll say, okay, Bob, relax. I gotta, I gotta do the thing you requested of me. I spent 15 minutes doing that and that's like half his show, right? So it's pretty unbelievable how quickly he was able to do it. But yeah, I think that just showcases how practice can really boost your confidence and get you used to painting, right? <clears throat> Some mediums extend trying to- Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I've been learning about that. Acrylic paint does have fun mediums, but I've never really looked into them myself. So they can help with that issue. Use the mediums, map. Oh, very cool. Okay. Tried watercolor, not my thing. I agree. I uh, I like playing with watercolor, but when it comes to like more detailed pieces, I exactly that's how I describe it to you, Andy. Is I I want control, and I have a hard time controlling the watercolor. I'm sure there's ways to do it. I just have a lot of trouble with it, and I like going on top of things and you know knowing that I can slather white on something if I want to start over. <laughs> And watercolor is kind of hard to do that. I'm sure there are ways, but it's a lot different for sure. Mm hmm. Yeah, I need to learn more about the papers, the hot press, cold press stuff. Because I honestly don't know much. So again, with this cloud up here, that's a little higher up, you can kind of choose what you want to do in the middle. Again, I want to keep it a little darker right at these top edges, but I can still bring down some nice light pinks in here, for example, as long as it's not too close by. Cute. I do, Andy, yes. Um, if you check out my Instagram, you can see a lot of spreads. I don't think I've posted the June one yet. I did a cute breakfast theme, but yeah, I've been doing that for years. Yes, feel free to join the Discord too. Yet another place <laughs> to keep in touch. Yeah. <clears throat> Watercolor control also involves a lot of brushes. I can imagine a lot more like shapes to deal with and stuff. Yeah. Like the layering and the diversity options, ability to change anything I don't love. Acrylics all the way. Exactly. Although I am honestly <laughs> starting to move towards the idea of oils. I feel like I've said that many times over the past year or two, but I swear I am. <laughs> the more I paint with acrylics, the more I'm like, I don't dislike them at all. I just feel like I want to try oils. I just want to want to try both, I think. We'll see. Okay, so for this last step for these clouds, I realize I still have the bottom clouds to do. If you notice, there's kind of wispier ones that will start as well. But for these last, uh, the last step for these fluffy clouds, I'm just gonna make one more light pink and it's gonna be the lightest pink. So even more white with just the tiniest amount of red or tiniest amount of pink in there. You can see I'm just mixing that up. And we're not adding too much of this color. I mixed it. I'm going to actually wash it off after I've mixed it so that my brush is again a little more, a little better shaped there. I'm only going to grab a little bit of this light pink that I mixed. Again, lots of white, tiny bit of red. I want a little bit on my brush. I'm going to tap my brush off a little on a dry paper towel as well, just so I don't have a whole lot of paint on there. 
I just want my brush kind of, you can see it's like, it's not fully coated, it just has a little bit of that light pink. And then with an even lighter touch, I'm just going to very much graze the very tips of these clouds. So I'm not bringing this down at all, I'm just going right along the very tops. You can see how that adds just a tiny little extra glow. See this one in front of all these other ones? There's a little extra softness, a little extra glow. So again, that was the very light pink, tapping on my paper towel, and just super lightly kind of wisping it on top. So just very lightly touching, allowing the tip of the brush to kind of graze across. It almost allows the bristles to separate a little too, that way you get all these nice kind of like dry brushing looks. They look very soft and transparent. That's what I personally like going for. A little more. Just going right along those tops. Yeah, I do feel like this step gives a little bit of like a, a scratchy look to it. So if you don't like the scratchy look, you can even skip this step. You could just make a lighter pink and kind of blend it again. But I personally like the kind of rough scratchy look right on the top. <clears throat> Grew up with co colored pencils, crayons, watercolors kind of extension. Right, right. Started using pastels the other day. Golly, they're smooth. Like oil pastels? Yeah. I remember playing with those in elementary school and having the same reaction graving like, they are smooth. <laughs> I just want to glide them across a piece of paper with no intention of what I'm actually making. They're really cool. I follow someone on TikTok who does some beautiful florals with them. Just kind of like bouquets of flowers with oil, oil pastels. They look very, very pretty. But alas, I won't buy them because I know I won't use them a whole lot. <laughs> I'll just stare at them and call them pretty and whip them out to have a nice feeling. Yeah, I think next investment is oil paints, honestly. I had some, but they got too crusty. And with this last color, if I didn't make it clear, it doesn't need to be like a nice continuous line either. You can kind of leave some gaps if you want. It doesn't need to be a nice smooth, you know, stroke all the way. You can kind of do one and then maybe start halfway past the other one. One curve, I mean. Doesn't need to be a very thick, continuous thing. You can see how there's maybe little, little gaps here and there. But you can see how that's turned out now with all those nice highlights on top. Yeah, look into the talks. So tasty, I agree, thank you. They're like cotton candy, thank you. Okay, so that's the last step for those big clouds here. The only other thing we do end up adding is a little bit of a highlight because of the moon, but that'll be later when we add our little beams coming down. Whoops, almost got my fingers painty. Um, we do still have these bottom clouds next, so I'll do those next with you all. I probably could have honestly done them while we were doing these big ones, but that's all right. Easy colors to mix anyway, so no big deal. Yeah, I think we'll get those next clouds on and then we're going to move down to our city buildings and the, uh, the power lines as well, which I know might be a little scary, but we can do it. I was scared too, putting on the lines themselves, but we got it done. We got it done. I've got some tricks for you to help you along. Okay, again, take your time with those clouds, even if you need to go back and re-add color, like I keep encouraging, re-adding some reds, re-adding some hotter pinks. You're welcome to do any and all of that if you need to. And you don't need to go back and re-add everything, right? You can even just do one or two of those and that's okay. Clouds, rocks, and trees. Yeah, always friends with them. Not, yeah, I know you've talked about rocks before for sure. 
Which is interesting, because in my brain it's just like, a rock is a rock, but I get it when you're adding the highlights on it and trying to make it, you know, almost overthink it sometimes. How do I make the rock a rock? I'm glad, Psycho, don't worry, we're, uh, we're still very much in tutorial mode. I don't think you'll miss any of uh, Five Nights, you're almost there, you're good. All right, let's start these uh, smaller clouds I pointed out. So yeah, a little less noticeable in the original, but I did do a second, you know, type of cloud. I did these very wispy ones just all along the bottom. So that way we have some nice big ones kind of higher up in front. And then maybe down here, Nappy, thank you so much. Welcome in. I'll give you a proper greeting in a second. Uh, yeah, I wanted to get some smaller ones further down as if maybe they're further away too. So we see a lot less of them. So I'm just going to use the same brush. Get some red paint, as we did at the start with those other clouds, right? We're going to do pretty much the same thing, just a lot simpler. A lot simpler. This time we're only going to do some horizontal lines. And then just like a little fluff with our brush. So I'm just doing some small little either taps or kind of swirls with my brush just to make it look like there's a little bit of height to this cloud. And that's all. That's all we need to do. You could even leave it as a wisp if you want, like quite literally just wisp a little left and right. That can be a cloud. I will leave that right there for you. But I'll continue doing a couple of these other guys. So wisping left and right, using the tip of your brush, giving a little bit of fluff to the middle, but same idea, keeping those two edges nice and sharp, nice and flat. Nappy, again, thank you so, so much. Uh, it's been a really fun day. We've been streaming since 11 uh, a.m. PST. <laughs> We're doing a tutorial right now. That's why I had to pause for a second there when you came in. I'm teaching everyone how to paint this step by step. We got some people painting along and or future friends painting along on YouTube. Hello again, YouTube. So yeah, welcome in. If you have any questions about what I'm doing, feel free, but otherwise enjoy the show. We're going to play Five Nights at Freddy's in probably about an hour. So that'll be a nice spooky vibe. Yeah, cool, cool. Glad you're here again. Thank you so much for the bits. I appreciate it. I'm just glad I can continue having fun on Twitch. So here we are celebrating that notion. Again, try your best not to overthink these. It can be as simple as you want. They can be just a little notch in the sky like that. That's okay, too. I'm just trying to somewhat space them out. You know, filling up the space however I want. I'm trying not to clutter it too much. If you ever see me using my finger, it's just a good way to kind of soften edges. I like to, you know, if you don't mind getting a little dirty, acrylic paint is fine on your fingers. It's okay. It'll wash out very easy. I just like kind of touching the sides sometimes and that kind of blurs them out a bit. It just helps move the paint in a little bit of a different way rather than using a painty brush and adding more paint, right? It's just kind of a clean way to, to move the paint around. I'll do one more down here, maybe. So that's all red paint that I was using, just plain red. Step one of a few. And if you haven't guessed, what we're going to do is we're going to go on top of these kind of similar to what we did up here. We got grabbed a lighter pink and a lighter pink. I'm just going to add those very quickly, very loosely on top because we don't need to like carve out any nice curves or any shapes. We're really just going to add a little extra pink kind of to the middles of these clouds and then a nice light pink on top. We'll only do three colors. We don't need to do all four. Unless you want to, then you can. So just because that seems pretty straightforward, I'm just going to continue with that. I'm going to do a nice kind of hot pink neck. So same plan as up top. I'm just adding a little white to some red, getting a nice bright hot pink going. I'm actually going to wipe a little off just because I'm working in smaller areas. I don't need big blobs of this color, right? And just as I described, I'm just going to try and touch up either the tops or the middles of these clouds just by either tapping or giving a little swirl to my brush. So just going in circular motions. And I think the looser, the better, honestly. Again, I'm not aiming to get any, you know, solid clean lines on here. 
I'm using less paint so that some of it kind of just scrapes off, some of it's a little transparent. And again, it just brightens up the clouds a little more too. They look a little less like, you know, red clouds and more like pink ones. It's very pink painting. And even the wispies, right? You're just kind of wisping a little extra color right on top of the red, allowing some of the red to stay, but covering some of it at the same time. There they are. And then rolling along, I'm going to do it one more time with a very light pink. I'm just going to add like tiny little bits to each. I don't want to overwhelm them, so I'm just going to maybe go right along the tops so with just a little extra, little extra, little extra. That just gives them a little extra color. How many times will I say little extra? Just a little extra, gives them a little extra. This guy needs a little extra. There you go. Done. If you want to blend a little, use your finger or use your paintbrush. You can re-add some of the darker pinks if you need to. But that's just fine right there. Cute! Now we get a lot more dimension too, a lot more depth, because we got these far away guys, we got these nice close ones. So I'll give a minute or two in case anyone's catching up on those. While I'm waiting, I'm going to add one more here, just because I want to. Feel like the space is a little open. We will be adding some moonbeams here, but just to kind of fill it up a bit more. Maybe I'll add two more. Why not? And yeah, you can be making these decisions for your painting too, right? Do you want to add a little extra? Go a little off the rails, you know? Do what you feel like. There's really no right or wrong. Cute. They're kind of like little UFO clouds. You can do anything here. The only prerequisite is that it makes you happy. You're so right, Bob! Bob just says everything I say, but way better. And it's because I learned from Bob. It's not like he's taking from me. I'm taking from him. I botch the quotes, and then Bob comes in and says them so much more eloquently. Blessings. <laughs> you can do anything here. The only prerequisite is that it makes you happy. That's what I mean by there's like no real wrong way to do it, right? If it makes you happy, great. If adding another cloud makes you happy, great. Just make sure it's not making you sad. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna prepare my plate with some black paint because we will be using black paint next. We use a mix of black and white, so just make sure there's black and white on your palette ready to go, and that'll be our next step. The only thing about using your fingers is you gotta keep checking which fingers you used because <laughs> get to a point where there's paint on all your fingers then you start rubbing and then you're rubbing the paint off and that's what we don't want. We want some clean fingers when we're blending. <laughs> Excuse me. So I gotta wipe them off here and there. But yeah, that's the other benefit about acrylics. I don't want to say they're like super, like the, the most safe thing ever, but I'm never worried about getting them on my skin, for example. Everything washes off with water. You don't need any fancy things to get the paint out, right? It does stain fabric like slightly, but as long as you get it while it's still wet, I find it's pretty manageable to get out. Oil paint, forget about it. <laughs> That's an issue. All right, let me talk about these buildings and then we can paint them. I'll spend a minute or two talking if you're still finishing up some of the cloud bits. Okay, so I'm going to start with our buildings down here. Um, I'm actually going to leave the power lines until after we do the moon to make sure we can get the moon beams behind the power lines. Okay, so power lines will leave till probably dead last. Yeah, because the stars will even go on before them too. Okay, anyway, the buildings. <laughs> I just wanted to give a little more, you know, some interesting stuff down here. 
Vintage watercolors, thanks for the raid. I'm just gonna finish my little step and then I will uh, give you a proper, proper welcome, okay? We're doing a step-by-step -step painting tutorial right now. Um, all right, so yeah, a couple buildings just to kind of show what's going on in the horizon line here. So I'm gonna start with a little rectangular guy here and then a couple lower ones that kind of staircase on their way up, thinking that like maybe some taller buildings are closer to us and they get a little shorter on the way, you know, ignoring this guy over here. Uh, I'm going to use my large flat brush for that, even though it's a super, well, not super large, it's larger. It's just good for that flat edge. Mesa, thank you so much for following. Vintage watercolors, I want to hear what you did on stream. I'll ask you all my little questions in a second. Or just, just put, put what you did in the stream real quick in the chat and I'll read about it when I'm done. Okay, so large flat brush. That way I get these nice edges that I can use for some straight lines, some clean, clean corners and stuff like that. I'm going to start by actually mixing, not black. Well, I'm not going to use black, not mix black. I want to mix a very dark gray. So I'm mixing black with a little bit of white, just so it's like a slate gray. I just don't want it pure black because I want to leave pure black for some shadows and shading. So I'm mixing black with a little bit of white. And I'm going to throw on our first building. So with all these buildings, kind of that front top edge, I do it a little bit of an angle. They angle a little bit up as they go to the right. Okay, so I'm going to start on the edge of my canvas. I'm using the flat edge of my brush. And I'm going to tilt it just a little up. It's very minimal, but it does tilt up a little bit. Start small if you want. If you're worried about how big to make this building, just make a nice little short one. And then we can work on it more as we go. Here's a nice angled line going up to the right. And then to make it three dimensional, we want to bring a little edge down to the right a little bit. So a nice sharp corner. And then we go down to the right, just a little bit. We don't want it as long as that first line there. And then we're going to go straight down from there. So trying to get some, yeah, very straight, steady lines if we can. I'm just going to prop this up so I can finish this line off. And again, I like using the thin edge of the brush. You can use it like this with all the bristles lined up, or you can flip it. You can use the flat edge and just go like this, kind of watching the right hand edge. Either one works. Okay, so I'm going to fill this whole thing in with dark gray, and then I'll show you how to make it more three dimensional with that shadow. Okay. Quick, uh, quick moment to look at chat. Vintage watercolors. Thanks so much for raining in. Making some, we're doing some makers and crafting. Were you quite literally making your watercolors on stream again? That's usually what I see you doing when I, when I hop in. For those who don't know, vintage watercolors again, makes their own watercolor paints. I follow on Insta. But yeah, let us know what you're doing. If you have any anything to show off, we can stick it in chat for you. But yeah, again, what we're doing right now is we're doing a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial. It's something I do about once a month on Twitch. I just like to lead people through a painting step-by-step -step to encourage people to do some art, gain a little confidence in, in the abilities up on YouTube after that. So that's what we're doing with all the people here. <clears throat> Happy anniversary. Thank you. Oh, the music? Yeah, it's uh it's called Chill Synthwave. It's uh if you've ever heard of a lo-fi girl on YouTube, this is like her counterpart, Synthwave Boy. I'm not kidding. <laughs> um and I really like uh his playlist. This is just on Spotify, but you can also listen free on YouTube Iowa as well. I have a new granite slab that is almost three times the size of my old one, so I was breaking it. Oh, cool! Breaking it with a few colors. Cool. Eldritch. What kind of color is that? Oh, thank you. Thanks, Gray, for grabbing the Instagram as well. For anyone who wants to check out Vintage Watercolors, the uh, the link is in chat there. I usually pull it up to show people, but because it's a toot, I'm gonna gonna keep it on the down low today. Thank you, Gray. Lo-fi girl lore is wild. Do, do you know more? I thought the lore was like minimal and I want to know more. Raven, I think it's Raven, right? Not to, you know, if you gotta go, you gotta go, that's fine. But what's the lore? 
Are they dating? Are they related? What's going on? I know you can see the little blue tint in her window and it's lo-fi boy or whatever. Sorry, synthwave boy. What is the story though? Okay, once we have the shape, switching back to toot mode real quick. Um, grabbing some black paint. So this is plain black paint on my large flat brush. And what I want to do is shadow the side edge of the building. So this is going to be the front. This is going to be kind of the, the right hand side. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my black and I'm just going to overlap the gray. Do a nice straight edge all the way down. I was using the full width of my brush there to make it a little easier. Again, I hope it's a Raven. Raven, thank you for the follow. And that way we make a little bit more of a three dimensional shape. We have the lighter front, the darker side, and that's a building. We'll add some little lights to it, of course, after, but for now, that's, uh, that's really the bulk of the building. That's really all we need to do. So a little better than just a plain rectangle, right? We can actually see some edges. So if I'm following my original, it looks like I do that three more times. I do a couple lower buildings. So I have one, I'll put a second a little higher up, a third a little higher up. Oh, and then there's a little on the edge too. So I'm just gonna keep doing that same step-by-step -step process of making a nice straight up and down line, angling kind of up to the right, angling quickly down to the right, and then back down again. And I'll let you know, actually, alternatively too, I'm going back to using dark gray, by the way, just for those keeping up here. Um, sometimes you don't need to do that extra edge, like this part here, if you have all your buildings really close together. So for example, these few coming up here, they're all really tight together. So we can even just kind of stack them all very close. I'll show you what I mean. So instead of doing my upward angled line and then coming back down like this, to make the rest of the building, I can just say, hey, there's a building beside it. It's gonna be nice and tight. So I'm just gonna connect the line there and uh, make another one here. So that'll be covered up in the end. That'll all look like one continuous shape, but it'll be two different buildings. So it's your choice. You can either space them out a little bit, get them a little more three-dimensional, or you can kind of stack them all together and make them a little more, a little easier to handle that way. They're a little more just plain rectangular buildings. <clears throat> a sparkly black, pretty. Oh, the art, I'm sorry, Messa. <laughs> I was like, you must be asking about the music. I don't know what you would call this. This was just my attempt at teaching some clouds, honestly. I just wanted some cute, like fluffy cotton candy clouds. But I guess it's kind of, it's kind of vapor wavy, I guess, a little bit. 80 style of art. Huh, yeah, maybe I unintentionally made vapor wave, I don't know. I just wanted some, some cute colors, some pinks and purples, some fluffy clouds as I described, and that's where we go, ended up. <laughs> like the bird, perfect. There's a whole thing with the reveal of Synthay Boy. I think I saw it on Tumblr, right? See, I was following when that happened and then I was a little disappointed because I felt like they didn't continue the hype that they had. Everyone, but yeah, before the reveal, everyone was cooking up these stories and they were like, oh my gosh, is there going to be like a murder mystery? Do we need to look around his room to figure out his identity? And then I felt like it was just kind of like, it's a new music channel, yay! And then we didn't really get much lore follow-up. But maybe I'm just, uh, I just didn't keep up. I don't know. Anyway, I thought the whole reveal was, uh, was cute and fun. Yeah, how Lo-Fi Girl, like, disappeared for a moment, right, from her chair, and everyone's like, where is she? <laughs> Everyone panicked. The world collectively panicked when she disappeared. Anyway, maybe I need to check it out on Tumblr. Okay, building two. I'm making these buildings that looks like a little taller than my original just for those keeping track of comparing these two, but still the same idea. I'm trying to get three stacked together. And again, this just showcases you can really do whatever you want down here. It doesn't need to be the exact order of buildings and the exact shapes I made. 
And if I didn't describe it, I'm filling them in with just horizontal or vertical brush strokes this time. Whoops. My canvas said nope. But yeah, just trying to keep these buildings a little more smooth. I'm not trying to add any fluffy texture like I was the clouds. So just like straight up and down brush strokes. All right, so because we're at the edge of this building, I'm going to go back to using my method of using some black paint. Doing a line kind of angled down a little bit. And then coming back down to the bottom, I got to bring this back up again. And then again, that way we get that nice shadowed edge, that more three dimensional look. Right. And I believe in my original too, I even added just a little bit of black paint to like the right hand sides of these buildings just to add a little more separation. And also because even if we're not seeing the right hand edge, there's probably going to be a shadow kind of cast, right? If this building's a little more in front, it's probably going to cast a little bit of a shadow. So if you feel like the buildings are looking a little too connected, you know, a little too blocky, try throwing just a little extra black on that right hand edge if they're all connecting that way. And I think you'll find it separates them just a little better. Okay, I still gotta straight, this guy's a little angled, right? Gotta straighten him out a little bit. Sorry, I just muted for the siren there. There we go. Yeah, and I guess it doesn't really show in the original up here, but there are indications of very short buildings. So I'm just going to add like one more little, little angled line here to make it look like there's a little, little short guy right in front. Or right on the right here. Just to kind of complete it. It looks a little more like a skyline there. There we go. Oh, thanks, Andy. Yeah, yeah. That's something I've been trying to think a little more about is when to use black because I'm hearing more and more, like I don't want to say it's a rule not to use it, but a lot of artists are like never use black. Shadows are all different colors and I, I'm starting to get that now. I, I'll still use black in my tutorials, I think, because it's still, you can see, provides a little bit of a punch. But I think if you want to go a little more realistic, I think the idea is you think of your, your blacks as dark purples or browns or whatever else, right? Payne's gray. There you go. So you know your grays. I don't even know my grays. <laughs> but yeah, there's like cool tones and warm tone versions and all, all of that. So yeah, I'm glad you're learning that too. I feel like that's a, a lot of thought goes into colors, you know? Getting everything right. It's not as simple as just adding a little black to your white to make it gray or you want to add some some warmth or coolness or whatever. Okay, I'm going to leave those there for a quick minute in case anyone's catching up. Uh, next, I'm going to move us back up here to the moon, actually. We want to do that moon in the moon beams. Moon, moon beams. Moon, <laughs> moon beams. There we go. Uh, and that way we have them behind the power lines. We'll do the moon stars power lines and i guess these lights on the building and then we're all good question the buildings are not in pure black yes they're very dark gray i start with the dark gray and i've been adding pure black to the sides but even this black like it may have even mixed with the gray a bit so this could even be considered like a super dark gray but yeah i definitely started with like yeah medium to dark gray i would say <laughs> i know you it's true i don't know all the grays i know a gray <laughs> Burnt Umber and Thalo Blue. Oh, okay, there you go. So cooler. Well, but Burnt Umber. Hmm. Is Burnt Umber warmer? I don't know. Favorite gray for sure. We have our favorite gray in chat. Hee hee hee. Yeah, I feel like I need to learn about the grays, honestly. It seems pretty key for, for shadows and such, as you're, as you're explaining. There she is. We don't need any other grays here. Just one. Uh-uh. All right, let 
me, yeah, let me go to the moon here. Let's all go to the moon next. So as usual, I'll talk a little bit about the moon first. So if you were listening as I was doing the clouds, I was recommending just choosing a little pocket for your moon. It can really go anywhere. I mean, I could move it up here. I could move it here. It wouldn't look great there, but it could go there. Um, just anywhere where it's going to kind of pop out a little bit, right? We don't want the moon to overlap anything. That's one thing, because think about it, the moon's very far away. <clears throat> Excuse me. So wherever it's going, it needs to be behind the clouds. It can peek out. It just can't go on top of any of the pinks, okay? So I'm going to rest mine right in here. Um, I'm going to use pure white for my moon. I don't know if that's the proper thing to do, but I wanted pure white, so I'm doing a pure white little crescent moon. And then what I'll do is I'll add a little yellow to the white to make more of like a soft yellow that I can use for moonbeams and a little bit of highlight on the clouds, okay? So that's the, uh, that's the plan. For most of that, we're going to use this teeny tiny brush. Any small brush you have just because we're making a small crescent moon, I think that makes sense, right? We gotta use a nice little tiny brush. I'm going to use some pure white. And again, I only say that's debatable because, I don't know, the moon's not a direct light source, but it kind of is. It's not like creating the light, but the light is bouncing. So that's why I'm hesitant. I'm kind of learning about only using white for things like the sun, just the sun, you know, or like a light bulb. But otherwise I'm usually mixing a little yellow in there, but for now, just pure white. So this is just plain white. I'm choosing to make a crescent that looks like a backwards C shape just to complicate things for me. Rather than saying paint a C shape, I'm saying paint a backwards C shape. So that's what I literally start with. You can see it's just a backwards C shape. No real shape to it quite yet. No width or anything is what I mean by no shape. It's almost like you're trying to almost complete a circle, but you leave a little bit of a gap kind of on one side. So that way it looks like it's almost complete, but there's just a little bit of nothing there. And then to make the crescent, what you do is you leave these two tips, the two tips of the C nice and thin, and just thicken up kind of that right hand side or more of that middle there. So you just make a nice wide right hand edge, keep those left hand sides very, very thin. Don't be nervous because if you mess up, you can easily, easily fix it up just by creating a nice purple like your sky and filling it in again. You can overlap that white very easily and try again if you need to. Sometimes I make it a little too thick and then I just go back in with my background kind of blue purple and use that to shape it up. Sometimes that's even easier is kind of using the background to chop it up a bit, if that makes sense. Yeah, I also like that shape a little better. So you can still see a little wider on the right hand side and then keeping those uh, those tips nice and thin. Play with it until you love it. There, that's good. Brown and blue with a touch of white makes planes gray, and I see, or panes gray rather. Yeah, so I imagine it's cooler. The brown I kind of think as a warm brown, but I'm sure you can have warm and cool browns too. Okay, so that's our moon. Now I want to add some glow. And again, we're not going for realism here. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like you wouldn't usually see this much light coming from the moon, but I love it. I love the little beams that come off. I love the nice bright highlights on top. So that's what I'm going to add. It's because I want to. So if you're questioning if that's uh, what happens in real life, the answer is probably it doesn't, but that's okay. <laughs> I think it looks pretty. So I'm going to paint it that way. So I'm switching brushes. I don't want my teeny tiny brush for this next step. I want to go back to my medium round brush and I'm going to go to my plate. And as I was just describing, I want to make like a glowy color. I don't want it pure white because it's not the direct light. I want it more of like a yellow white. So I'm going to take a pile of uh, white rather. Oh, that's dry yellow. <laughs> this is the problem with the volcano plate. This is, this is from days ago. <laughs> it's not wet. Um, if it were wet though, I'd take a tiny bit of yellow, add it into my pile of white. I'm just trying to make a nice, very, very light yellow. 
Okay, this is a little dollop of wet yellow. I just want the tiniest bit to mix into my white. I don't know if you can even see it with the brightness of the camera, but you can see, oh yeah, you can see it's a little more yellow. A little more yellow. Kind of buttery, dare I say it. Thank you, Bray. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do with the buttery yellow is after it's on my brush, I'm gonna wipe it off a little bit. We don't want a lot of paint on our brush for these next few steps. We want this to come off very light, very textured, very transparent. So I'm going to the side here, I'm wiping this on my paper towel. Let's start by adding this to our clouds. So I'm just going to add this light yellow to our clouds, just like I did our light pink. I'm just going to kind of focus it on this very top edge here and I'm just lightly applying it, kind of wisping it on like I was before, allowing that tip of the brush to graze on top. Just anywhere very close by to the moon. So maybe here, maybe a little lower down, not too much. We don't want to overdo it. We just want to make it look a little brighter in these areas. Maybe a little bit coming off of this guy. And again, not carrying it all the way up, just kind of keeping close to the moon. I think I even added just a tiny bit up here, kind of like just this edge, maybe a little like this. But again, focusing mostly on these guys here. If you like that look, you could even super lightly kind of go around your moon too, almost looking like the moon itself is projecting a little bit of a glow. So I'm just kind of swirling my brush around with, again, the most minimal amount of paint on there because I don't want to make it look like a big yellow band going around the moon, just a nice little highlight. And again, if you add a little too much, you can always repair it by mixing a purple and getting in there. Got a little out of control. There we go. So it looks like just a little bit of a wispy glow. And now we add the beams. So same thing, I'm just grabbing a little more of that yellow, uh, white yellow, wiping it off of my brush. And I'm just gonna create some beams coming from the moon down to the left. So I'm gonna start from, I don't wanna start literally at the moon. I don't wanna paint from the moon down, but I'm gonna visualize and say from the very center of the moon, I just wanna go straight out from there. Everything wants to be pointing right to the center of the moon. So I'm gonna go from here. I'm gonna skip over the cloud and then it's gonna choose a spot where I think a beam of light's gonna shoot out of. Let's go right there. It's gonna come out straight from the moon, straight from the moon. So I'm just very lightly, very lightly with my brush, just allowing the very tips to kind of graze across. I'm using the word graze a lot today. It's gonna to graze across and down, to create these beams. Just swiping back and forth in these nice straight brush strokes, adding a little more pressure if you feel comfortable with that, if you wanna make it a little brighter, a little more filled in. And you can see I'm also kind of making this uh, this idea of like a smaller, thinner start and then kind of wider end here to make it look like maybe the light is coming out of a little hole in the cloud, you know? That's what I'm kind of imagining. Like it's all shooting out of one little area and then expanding as it comes further out. So I'm trying to make it like kind of angled at these ends here. Right? Grabbing a tiny bit more paint, just applying a little more with a little more pressure. Swiping maybe a little extra at the start so it's a little brighter. And then the light kind of fades away. All right, so that's kind of kind of one moonbeam. I know there's like a lot of little beams in this, in, uh, inside it, but it's kind of like one uniform beam. I personally add a couple of those, so I'm gonna add Maybe one up here. Again, maybe I imagine there's a little hole here. Just make sure I'm going straight from the moon down to the hole and then continuing straight from the moon. All one fluid motion there. This is gonna be a smaller little beam coming out.
And again, just take your time. You can always add more paint. It's harder to take it away, right? So do your best at using just the smallest amount of pressure and just know that you can always go back with a little more paint or a little more pressure to make things brighter. I know it might be a, a test of patience, but again, it's, a, it's best to just kind of give it lots of time, go nice and slow with it. And the more you do it, the, uh, the easier it'll become, the more confident you'll get. You'll kind of get a feel for how much paint should be on your brush, how much pressure you're using, all of that good stuff. All right, last moonbeam, I'm going to come more like straight down, not straight down, but further down than before. So coming from the middle of the moon, I'm going to come to about here and then continue. Middle of the moon, down to here, continue. A little more, a little more. Again, trying to brighten kind of the start of the moonbeam a little extra, as if the light is all collected there, and then it kind of disperses as it goes. But again, all of the beam, if you like kind of draw a line right through the middle, should be going right to the moon, right to the moon, right to the moon. <laughs> I almost read that differently. Uh, ST Heart, welcome in. Thanks for following. We're doing a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know. Yeah, I almost forgot the T in that one. All right, that's our beams. I could add more. I don't want to overdo it though. Again, it's kind of a, a game of knowing when to stop. Again, and also thinking about the fact that you can always go back later on. So maybe I want to leave it for now, but I can always go back and maybe add a little extra kind of in the middles or at the starts if I want to as well. I'll leave it for now though. I'll give an extra minute in case anyone's still adding those glows. And we've got a couple things left. I got to do some stars. I got to do some power lines and then some lights in the buildings to make them a little more, a little more glowy rather than how dark they currently are. Maybe I'll add a little more glow. I just said I'm good with the glow. I'm gonna add a little more just cause I'm giving you all another minute or two. I'll uh, play with the glow just a touch more. I'm looking at my original and I'm thinking I added a little more, a little more color here. Made it a little thicker. Oh yeah, that's a lot thicker, but I like it. Again, as long as you're doing it a little bit, I find it doesn't doesn't wreck it. You just want to keep it closer to the start, maybe a little more in the center. It still looks nice and soft. So again, this is a product of just adding a little more paint to my brush and maybe using a little more pressure as well. I'm kind of in between grazing and adding pressure to really rub the brush on the canvas. All right. So in addition to these nice moon beams and moon, I also wanted to add some stars to really fill up the sky. Obviously it's a bright night. We want to get some, some stars to create a little more light and a little more glitter in the sky. So very easy. I'm just going to take my teeny tiny round brush here, my small round. I've got white again, again, pure white, because these are light sources in the sky. If you want to change up some colors with some kind of yellow uh, whites or even add some planets with some like oranges and stuff. That would be really cute. I'm just going to add white though. So I've just blobbed white paint on the end of my brush there. See that nice big blob for my very misshapen brush. This poor thing is like angled <laughs> at this point. Uh, I find a blob is good and then you're literally just tapping on and off and you get a nice little dot. Tap, 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 tap. Um, the harder you tap, the bigger the star will be. The lighter you tap, the smaller it'll be. So you can add some very small little twinkly guys. 
You can get your fresh blob and really make a nice big one. Add some little constellations, add some shooting stars, like I said, add some planets, add a UFO, whatever you want in the sky. It just again kind of helps um, fill up some space because we have a lot of open space in between our clouds. I just try and sporadically add my stars. There's really no strategy. I kind of cluster maybe a couple together, leave a little space, add a couple more. It's just getting as much variety as possible. So I really fill up the top, uh, I would say a lot with these stars, and then as I get further down, I add less and less. And the idea behind that is as we get further down, the sky is a little lighter, so we're going to see less stars. So I try and space them out a little bit more, maybe make them a little smaller as well if I can. Just overall adding less of them. So it looks like they're kind of disappearing as the light, you know, continues further down. Maybe the sun hasn't fully set, maybe there's some light pollution from the city. <laughs> I am adding them in the beams as well, just thinking that they'll be behind the beams, right? They'll still kind of glow through the beams. There we go. Pretty good. Love adding my little stars. Or you can turn it into snow and just continue them all the way down. Either or, either or. I didn't do any splatter stars in this one. I wanted to keep them more controlled. Um, usually when I do stars or like big night skies, I like to take my brush and flick the paint on. But yeah, I just wanted to keep it cleaner this time. I was <laughs> debating doing it and I was like, I don't want to have to cover the clouds up and kind of shield them from flicking. So that was my main debate. Um, I guess that could have been solved if we did the stars at the very start after this kind of purple background. Um, but yeah, at the time I was not doing things in order. So <laughs> I just chose to manually add the stars. But yeah, just an idea. If you want more of like a scattered star look, a very full sky, um, just take some white paint Mix with a little water, stick it on your brush, and then flick, 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 and it creates a really nice effect. I've done it a lot with uh, with other tutorials, with other designs, so if you're ever looking for a full explanation, you can probably find that on YouTube pretty easily. Oh, I just dipped in paint. Oopsie. Ah, gross. All right, quick minute, and then I'll move us on to our final steps. We've got, I guess I'll do the lights of the building first, and then I'll do the power lines at the very, very end here. My buildings are completely dry. If yours aren't, you can give it an extra couple minutes. We can do the power lines, then you can do the lights. I just figure it's easier to do the lights first in case a power line directly intersects, you know, with, uh, with some lights. You can see not a lot of them do. This guy's kind of clear, this guy's kind of clear, but this middle one might, so we can do the, uh, the lights of the buildings first. Okay, so for the building lights or windows or whatever you want to refer to them as, I'm switching brushes again. I'm going to do the medium round brush personally. You could also use your um, large flat brush. The flat brush would actually be very nice for these rectangular shapes. Uh, I think mine's just a little too big. I'm actually debating using it. Uh, I'll use it. No, I'm going to switch. I said medium round. You could use medium round. You could also use large flat. I'm going to switch and use large flat. So I'm just saying too big, like I was worried the width is too big, but I'm sure I could just some nice easy brush strokes with that guy. Do large flat. Okay, so I did my window lights, building lights in a couple different colors. Just I used like a plain white and then I used a, a white with yellow, pretty much the two that I used for our moon and moonbeams. So I'll start with a pure white and then I'll do the yellow white just so you can see a little bit of a difference. So what I did is I just grabbed some white paint on my large flat brush. You can see I was kind of wiping it to make sure all my bristles are nicely lined up there. So I got a nice flat edge. And then I'm just going to kind of 
pull it downwards. I'm going to rest it uh, so the bristles are horizontal. Pull it down. And he got a little window. It's a tiny bit messy at the end there, but the idea is if I just use that kind of flat shape at the top, you can kind of create some pretty easy rectangles. Starting at the top, pulling down, ending off. The hardest part is just getting them to look the same. I try and get the windows to be the same shapes on each building. They vary building to building, but so for example, because I've started this way, I'm going to keep doing these uh, kind of square looking windows. They're pretty big compared to the other windows I was doing. And yeah, just kind of offsetting here and there. I don't need to do every single window because it's nighttime and maybe some people have, you know, gone to bed. They're being responsible adults. Get into bed nice and early. So yeah, maybe I leave some gaps at the top here. Maybe I'll turn on this light in here. It's kind of like you're making a little checkerboard, but you don't have to follow a pattern, if that makes sense. You're just kind of imagining where each window would be and then filling in a couple here and there. You don't need to do a whole lot. Maybe I'll add another at the bottom there. And again, trying to make them all similar. Similar or the same. So these are all kind of square looking windows. Maybe I'll take my white and do some like kind of slits for windows so I can use the either corner or flat edge of the brush. Just do a couple like vertical slits for windows. That looks nice as well. Again, doing a couple beside each other, leaving some gaps. So that's a different kind. What else did I do here? Oh, and that's about it. Maybe some like some rectangles, so kind of similar, just not pulling down as much. So just kind of going like that. More of a more of a horizontal rectangle. Let's do a couple here. And again, you can be as detailed as you want with these. I'm kind of doing them a little messier, honestly, just because of time. Don't want to keep you here all night long. But yeah, I could be perfecting these bottom edges here, going in with a teeny tiny brush and really, really lining them up nicely. But mainly just trying to get them similar to the same for each building. So there's a couple more. And then just because this building's further away, I'm going to do just smaller, smaller versions of this. So just kind of taking the corner of my brush, pulling down a little bit. So kind of like little tick marks for this one. And personally, I only put lights on the front. I guess in theory, you could be putting lights on the side as well. But I'm not. I'm just going to keep it nice and dark over there. And that's all white lights. So I haven't been adding a lot of lights because I want to, excuse me, go back in with some light yellow and add a couple more windows as well. So once you've done a large batch of the white ones, you can take your brush and mix together a nice light yellow on your plate. Again, no rush if you're still doing the whites, keep going, but just know you can switch up your color and do the same thing. Just kind of keep, again, the window shapes consistent. And that way you're kind of showcasing, you can hardly see it on the camera, but I do see it in my painting here. Kind of showcasing the idea of people having some warm lights and cool lights. The white being cool and the yellow being warm. Just adds a little bit. If you put lights on the side, would they be smaller or bigger or the same size? Ooh, that's a question. Hmm. I feel like they'd be around the same size. Like if we wanted to get super detailed about it, you could say, I would think these ones are the biggest because they're, I think, closest to us. And then I think as they move to the left, they're getting a little further. And as they move to the right, they're getting a little further. But I feel like the difference would be so minor. But I think you'd just be mimicking this side. You're just kind of following a different angle. That's more the issue, I would say, is the angle. So see how these are all lined up? They're all angled the same way the top of the building is. They're all kind of going like this, like this, like this. These guys would go the other way because they're angling away and to the right or down to the right rather. So I'd say that's the bigger thing. But yeah, I'd say around the same. I 
feel like that would play a big difference if the buildings were like really close to us. Then you could start to say which ones are bigger. Oh, I forgot this little guy down here. Let's give him a few lights. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, watch the angle. I guess I should have said that too. That is a good point. So you can see how I'm not lining all these windows up perfectly straight. It's not like I'm looking at the canvas and doing a straight horizontal line, right? They're all tilted if you look at how they're all lining up. Again, they're not perfect. But I'm trying to show that. They're all, yeah, watching that angle at the top there and following it along, along, along. It's, it's more noticeable, these guys here. Yeah, good point, Gray. Okay, I'll add a couple of yellows here. Ah, oh, these are getting quite messy. But again, if you get a little messy, first of all, that's okay. Second of all, very easy to fix. Take your dark gray, cover up what you don't like, try again. Or use the dark gray to shape up the lights that you think are a little, uh, a little messy. All of those work. Okay, I'll give a quick minute before the final piece, the scary, scary power lines. <laughs> and I know people think they're scary because they're just, they're very thin. And I was scared too when I first added them, but I don't regret adding them. I think they really add to the painting. It really makes it look like you're kind of driving by, but also looking up, you can see the tops of those power lines along with the tops of the buildings that are maybe further away. But again, you can see how this could also be considered a complete painting too. Now that we've filled up the bottom a little better, I think it looks pretty good. But I'll lead us through these power lines as well. One, two, three, four. Is that fourth one fitting on there? Ah, oh, there he is. I gotta shrink this down a tiny bit. There we are. Okay, so just to talk about the power lines first and then we can paint them. Um, they as well are going to be following an angle. So if we pay attention to uh, the original painting here, you can see how the tallest power line is furthest to the right and they get a little smaller, a little smaller, a little smaller. That's because the one on the right, I chose it to be closest to us and then it's kind of like we're kind of looking down maybe a highway or something or a roadway and all the lines start to get smaller because they're further away from us. So that's the first point, kind of make sure we're doing them at an angle going down like this. Second point, I want to check out the tops of the shapes. So we have straight vertical lines. They are straight, they're not angled, so they go straight up and down. And then I made the T shape on top straight across as well. So we're not going to angle those. We're going to keep those nice straight T shapes. It's just the height that we're angling. So I want to make sure that's clear. We're not angling any lines. We're just making sure the height is angling downward. Okay. And then I'll explain the lines themselves after. For now, I'm just going to concentrate on the actual like T shapes there. And then we'll fill up the lines after. All right. So your brush of choice for this, if you want to go nice and slow, you could use a tiny detail brush if you want, but honestly, I would recommend trying out a bigger brush because the tiny detail brush can be really frustrating considering it can only hold a small amount of paint. I think you'll find yourself, you know, painting a little, grabbing more paint, painting a little, and that can be very frustrating. And it also gives you a little more of a jagged line, I find, because you're constantly going back. You're not doing one fluid motion. So I would recommend either trying your medium round or your large flat. That way you can have enough paint to just go one swipe. And even if your swipe is a little angled, you can kind of fix up the edges a bit to straighten it out a bit. But I really think the best shot you have is trying to go boop, kind of all at once. You can go as slow as you want, but just keeping the brush on the canvas to keep a nice smooth brush stroke the whole way through. Um, so I think I will use, I'll use my large flat. If you're really nervous about this too, try testing it out on like a piece of paper something else that you don't mind testing just to kind of you know get the fluid motion going practice a couple times but yeah i'm going to use my large flat that way i can have all the bristles lined up in this very nice thin line 
The other thing I'm going to do, which I recommend when doing thin lines in general, is I like to add a little bit of water to my brush and therefore to my paint. It kind of thins out the paint a little bit and I think allows for more of a fluid stroke all the way down. It also reduces, I think, the chances of adding, you know, too much paint, like a blob or anything. If it's a little more liquidy, you're not going to leave behind big blobs of paint. It's just going to be a little more liquefied and thin, right? So I find it kind of glides better and doesn't leave behind any, like, big blobs of paint, as I just described. So yeah, I dipped in the water a little bit, tapped it off, and now I'm just applying the paint by kind of wiping against my palette. So again, I'm not scooping anything, I'm just kind of grabbing little bits of the wet black and kind of flattening as I add. So you can see how my brush is covered in black, but there's no big blobs. It still has that very nice shape to it. All right. So I'm gonna start with our biggest pull on the very right hand side. It's like just to the right of this big building. So I'm gonna keep it right over here. Um, I like to go from top to bottom, just so I know how tall I'm going. I don't need to worry about when to stop. I just go all the way to the bottom, right? I'm gonna actually pop my canvas up so I can do that. I can go straight off. Here I go. And then using, of course, the, the bristles vertically. They're all lined up vertically. Here I go. That's one. And you can see how that was a little shaky, but that's okay. Um, I purposely made the line thinner than I wanted so that I can do it a second or third time and maybe make it a little thicker. Concentrate on what edge I'm looking at here. What edge I'm trying to fix up, rather. And I am just trying to make a solid, consistent width all the way down. I think it's naturally getting a little thinner at the top, but I am trying to get it the same width. Maybe a little wider at the bottom? I don't know. Power lines, power line poles. I feel like they're pretty much the same width all the way up. If you want to be picky, we can we can be picky, but I think same width is pretty pretty good. Okay, something like that. Again, not perfect. I see it's tilting a little bit, a lot of it, but that's all right. To adjust the tilt, I'm going to try and show you here. So mine is tilting a little left. So that means I want to fill up the top right hand side and bottom left hand side a little bit. That way I'm kind of straightening it back out. So I'm just going to do a little extra paint on this right hand side at the top. A little extra paint bottom left. And that overall has kind of tilted it back a little extra. Still not perfect, but that's okay. I'm going to leave that one alone. I'm going to do all the uh, vertical lines first and then I'll do the T shapes on top. So let's do the second one. So I want to make sure the second one is a little lower. So I'm going to bring this across. I'm not painting. I'm just <laughs> hovering. Go a little further down. So I'll go maybe from here. Yeah, that's about right. Same thing. Right on top of any windows, right on top of the building. That's fine. Oh, there's another thing to point out too. Check out the spacing in between. Uh, so the first and second pull, you can see it's, it's about half the canvas I went. I went from the very edge all the way to about halfway. And then I'm going to fit two more in this space. And that's because as they're getting further away, they're going to appear a little closer, right? So let's grab a little more black paint. I've got that second one. Let's do the third one. I'm going to go about maybe a little a little over three quarters of the way. So if this is three quarters, I'm gonna go a little extra. Again, starting a little lower. And then the last one is gonna be even lower and it's gonna be even closer. So the gaps should be getting slightly closer together as you get further away. I'm sure there's some sort of lovely mathematical equation for exactly how gapped they should be but you know i'm just making sure each gap is slightly smaller that's all half canvas that's like a third that's like a quarter i would say and there you are hey shay welcome back long as we are be ever been gardening and doing other chores oh yeah perfect we will be starting that very soon as you can see we're almost done thank you thank you all right, so we got the scary, scary vertical pulls on. 
We just got to add the little T shapes up top now. And there are some tiny details on top, but we can get to those after. I'm just going to keep using the same brush. And I just want to make a like horizontal line to make essentially a large T shape. So here I go again. These lines are not angled. These are trying to be straight horizontal. So horizontal with your canvas, right? I'm going to start on the right side of the canvas. And then come across to the left. How far? Uh, I don't know how far. Again, I'm bad with measurements. Maybe an inch? Is that about an inch? Until it feels right. Measure with your heart. That's always a great, uh, a great solid uh, tip. Uh, either way, <laughs> we should be getting smaller and smaller each time again. So we want to make sure whatever length we make this T shape, just make it a little smaller, a little smaller, a little smaller. As long as you're doing that, I'm sure you can't really go wrong as long as you're not making a horizontal shape all the way across the canvas, you know, you know? Just make a T shape, see how it looks, adjust if needed. Here's my second one. which I think is actually the same size as the first. So I'm just going to extend the first a bit, <laughs> make it a little bigger. It's an easy way to fix. Third one, a little smaller, or a little shorter, I should be saying. Shorter length, right? And again, if you want it to be really picky, really detailed, you could say maybe a little thinner. I feel like I'm not changing the width a whole lot, though, personally. There, that's four. One, two, three, four. I can count. Okay, I'll just give a quick minute in case anyone's catching up on that last little bit. The only thing left is to add a couple details. We want to add a couple like little nubs on the top, little uh, little lumps for the little connectors, and then the uh, and then the lines themselves. You can see I'm going in with my detail brush. I'm just kind of cleaning up some edges here. Again, that big brush is nice for some fluid motions, but obviously some details on the edges might be missed or uh, kind of tampered with here. There we go. Almost there. So yeah, if you haven't already, I would switch to the, uh, the detail brush. I'll be using it for the last couple steps of the tutorial just to get our little details and the power lines themselves on as well. So let's do the details. The details are minimal, by the way. Details just involve creating, like I said, little, little nubs or little lumps in the power line. I created four, four little lumps on each of the power lines to make little kind of connectors for the line. So on the top of this T shape, I'm going to start on the very left hand side, maybe just a little in. I'm just doing quite literally a little bump with my brush. It's like a semicircle, but really it's just a result of me bumping the brush up like that, creating just a little, little bump. Three, four. Evenly spaced for the most part. If you want, you can even add a little little bump for the post if you want like maybe a little little middle guy just to kind of separate everything one two three the fourth one is hiding i made a little bump for the post one two three four bump for the post first one is hidden two three or a little bump for the post. I don't know why, I just like the little post kind of sticking up a little higher. Again, I don't know if that's true to form, but I think it makes sense to me, so that's what I'm doing. Okay, quick moment before we do the last step of power lines. Oh, it's 6.30! 
We gotta go. No rushing, take your time. I hope my <laughs> we gotta go doesn't rush you. I'm just gonna get to the last step of the painting, but hopefully you all continue to take your time. Again, pause me if you have to, take a rest from your painting if you have to, especially with this last step here, take some deep breaths. Psych yourself up. The power lines. All right, so essentially what we're doing at the power lines, we have all these little little lumps, right, that I keep describing. What I want to do is uh, connect each lump on the corresponding side of each power line with one solid swoop of a line. So for example, this very left-hand bump is going to be connected by a big swoop to the next left-hand bump, swoop left hand, swoop left. So you're just kind of connecting one at a time. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go connect one, connect one, connect one, and then I'll start to do the second bump, connect the second bump, second bump, second bump, third, 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 fourth, fourth, fourth. So four lines total, just continuing throughout each power line. Uh, once again, I would recommend watering down your black a little bit. I find it helps it flow a little more, especially with this tiny brush, right? The tiny brush can't hold a lot of paint. So if you kind of thin it out and liquefy it a bit, it'll carry a lot further than rather than a thick paint trying to come off of that tiny brush. So I'm adding a little water to my brush, tapping into the black, wiping off a little bit just so there's no big bumps of black paint sitting there. All right. Uh, and now what I'm going to do <laughs> is pray and hold my breath. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to swoop down with each line and swoop back up. So I'm kind of, I like to kind of look where I'm going. That's really my big piece of advice today. I'm constantly checking in as I'm painting. I know I'm just hovering right now, but as I'm coming down, I'm kind of like, where am I going next? Am I coming back up yet? No, no, no. Let's go back up now. Aiming for this one. You're kind of just slowly going. It doesn't need to be a quick process. Just take your time and uh, I would just try your best to be kind of looking ahead as your brush drags with you. You're kind of like dragging the brush along with your eyesight, if that makes sense. <laughs> Looks at unfinished tree blossom too from weeks ago, right? <laughs> Reflects on what the rest meant. If that's what a rest is to you, that's okay. A month or five or two years. We all know I love my two year rests from painting and then completing them later. Keanu. All right, here I go. Enough, enough times practicing, but keep practicing as much as you like. I find it helps to just get the motion going. Get the motion going. Here we go. Down. Back up. Hey, not bad, not bad, right? Um, oh, and my other point as well, as I was gonna say, the very bottom of the curve, I think is a little off center. I was trying to make the bottom a little more to the left Again, I don't know if that's exactly right, but I think it looks right. So I'm going to keep doing that. It kind of comes further down and then kind of shoots back up at the end. So let me describe that again as I'm doing it. So I'm going to curve down, kind of like slower. It's slowly going down, slowly going down, slowly going down. And then I'm like two thirds of the way across and I'm like, oh yeah, I have to curve up. And then I quickly curve up. You know, I think that looks right. Just from our, our viewpoint, it's almost like it looks like the bottom of the curve, even though it should be in the middle, we see it as further away. If we were looking straight at the power lines and they are right in front of us all next to one another, you would see that curve uh, bottom out right in the middle. Does that make sense? <laughs> I think it looks good, so I'm going to say it makes sense and I'm going to say that's the way it is. Here we go. Curve. And up. You know what I'm saying in my head as I do this? I'm saying bend and snap. Honestly, legally blonde fans, I'm going like this. So I've done all the left hand side, by the way. This is the part where it might get a little confusing because you're intersecting, but just try to block out those lines from your vision and just say, I'm just doing the same thing again on a different, different lump or nub. Okay, check this out. It's the bend and snap. We're gonna go, <laughs> I gotta collect myself. Okay, we're gonna go bend and snap. Like the snap is quicker. The way up is quicker. Bend and snap. Bend and snap. 
So longer start, shorter end. Is that acceptable? <laughs> Is that fair? I'm very professional teacher. I use bend and snap. Ready? Okay, I'm on the third knob. I'm going to connect all the thirds. Bend. And snap. Bend. And snap. Bend. And snap. It's working! I mean, it's working! Again, the hardest part, I think, is just blocking the other lines for your vision. If you start to think about those lines too much, I think you start to, yeah, you start to overthink. Things end up where they shouldn't be. Just do the same thing over and over again. Okay, the last nub is out here, so let's pretend we're painting, but we're not. So we go bend and snap. So the line's just going to start anywhere on the side there and come across. We're going to go bend and snap, bend and snap. That last one got a little dippy, but that's okay. When you put them all together, it's hard to see all those little tiny things that you might see. You might see all the tiny little mistakes, but someone's going to look at it and be like, oh, it looks good. What do you mean? But I'm looking at this one bend here and saying it's too much. Also, don't forget that we need to complete the lines going the other way here and the other way here. It's just easy to forget because we don't have anything to connect them to. So this one, for example, it's going to come across here, across here, across here. You're just doing quick little curves for those. And this guy, same thing. Quick little curve, quick little curve, quick little curve. Wow! I could do this bend and snap. I don't think I can do the bend and snap the way Reese teaches us. Whatever bend and snap works for you, I'm here to provide. Wow, that's the power lines. Okay, and the only other very minor detail, again, not to rush right through this, but this is a tiny minor detail. If you like the idea of highlighting things, adding a little glisten to things, um, I did technically take a little bit of a gray, so just mix together about half black, half white there. It's not super dark, it's not super light. And I just did a couple little little lines on the tops here, on the tops of the T-shapes, and even maybe highlighting the little bumps. Just because that moon is so bright, right? We wanna we wanna highlight some things. So that just elevates it a little bit more, getting a little bit of a highlight on top of these guys. The moonlight. If you wanna even do a little bit on the pole itself, just a little vertical line you can, just to add a little like texture to the pole almost. You could go all day with this, adding highlights to everything, but that's about where I stopped with my original. I just did some gray parts. Um, again, you could highlight the tops of the buildings, you could add more texture in like the pole here. So many different things. Texture, exactly. There's not a whole lot of texture, but we want at least a little bit. Cute! My buildings still like the, look like they're going to topple over a bit. I didn't make them the, the most straight up and down, but that is okay. That is okay. All right. So that's the, uh, that's the end of the painting. Yay! Only two hours, 40 minutes this time. My, my toots are getting longer and longer. I do my best to manage them, but I don't know what it is. I keep saying I'm going to make simpler designs and then I don't. Uh, and that's okay. I'm just glad to keep uh, keep doing this, keep providing for everybody. Uh, don't forget, we always sign our paintings as well. Sign your painting when you're done. No rush to sign it now if you're still working on it. If you still want to add some things, that's totally fine. I just like going in the bottom corner here. Again, it gives the very personal artist touch. Make a fun little signature for yourself. And that's all. Ben and snap. Good job. I watched the movie recently. You can do it. Oh, the Ben and snap, a classic. Um, thank you for joining me, everybody. <laughs> I'll just uh, sign off my tutorial with a little goodbye and a couple little last minute things to say. Uh, but as I said, if you're still painting, there's no no harm in continuing. If you want to give yourself a break, that's fine. But 
at the same time, if you're having a great time painting and just wanna wanna keep going, keep going, keep going as I say my last little things here. Uh, thanks for joining me. As I said earlier in this tutorial, I try and uh, do these free tutorials maybe like once a month at this point. So if you're seeing less uploads on YouTube, that is why. I'm just trying to explore my art world in different ways. You know, I've been teaching paintings for, oh gosh, before COVID was six years. Now it's like another three. I'm, yeah, I'm like at least 10 years teaching paintings step by step. And I'm feeling like after 10 years of teaching step by step, I'm a little more confident in my abilities. So I'm trying to make more things that are a little more, you know, complicated like this, like that in the background. Um, so yeah, if you see me doing less on YouTube and stuff like that, that's why. Um, I'm concentrating on like filling up my art shop. I now sell original pieces and prints and different products uh, and I'm working on new things to add. So that's the reason why, just in case you're wondering, but don't worry, I still continue to plan to upload to YouTube uh, and keep doing free tutorials as long as possible. So don't worry, they're not going away. They're just less often. Um, speaking of which, if you want to keep up with free tutorials and when I'm offering them, I think the best place personally is Facebook to look for that. I'm pretty, um, pretty consistent with making Facebook events so that people can look at my event page and see what's coming up. People can RSVP to get notifications. Um, but yeah, I do my best, like I was saying earlier too, to just update everywhere I can with new tutorial dates. So just check those social medias and if you see a date, great. If you don't, just know that I'm kind of working on a new piece to, uh, to teach or working on a piece for myself. So that's why they're a little more few and far between. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, almost choked on my spit. Um, if you'd like to <laughs> show off your paintings that you made, I'd love to see what you made today. Um, I just saw Gray posted all my socials in the uh, Twitch chat. Thank you very much. And for those on YouTube, I'll put a cute little graphic right now with all of my, my socials, even though they're all the same. They're all Aaron Bun paints everywhere. Uh, but yeah, post photos wherever you like. Tag me if you can on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, I always direct people to Facebook to post their photos because you can post them in the little event page that I was re uh, just talking about. Uh, but yeah, whatever social media is of choice, I would love to see what you made. Discord, any of that works. Uh, feel free to let me know, feel free to show me, even by a, a little message to me, that's fine as well. Um, I love seeing what people made with, uh, with my design. Uh, again, next tutorial isn't quite scheduled yet, I hope to have that up in another month or so, or I guess like scheduled for a month from now. Uh, another shout out to YouTube if you want to see this played back, uh, go to YouTube. Shout out to Twitch if you want to see this live, you know, if you want to see the next tutorial live, come to Twitch, hang out with me. I stream a few times a week at this point consistently doing painting, games, different things with the community, so feel free to hop by. Uh, and I think that's all. Yeah, I'll catch up on chat and answer some last minute questions, otherwise I'll say bye to YouTube. Thanks for joining me. See you at the next one. Bye.